View from the Gutters, Episode 50, Part 1. Welcome to View from the Gutters, the comic book podcast where each episode we discuss a collected edition, trade paperback, or graphic novel, and then recommend and vote on the book for the next episode. Warning. The discussion portion of this show has massive spoilers for that book. On this episode, we discuss Crisis on Infinite Earths, and stay tuned for the next two parts when we discuss Identity Crisis and Infinite Crisis. All right, you guys ready? Yeah, let's do this. All right. All right. Uh, welcome to... Oh, I'm going to start over. Hang on. <laughs> welcome, no, dude, to... welcome to <laughs> View from the Gutters, <laughs> Crisis on Multiple Podcasts. Mulligan. This is Crisis on Podcast One. Yeah, this is episode 50. Welcome to our special. Well, nice. and, and if you were listening and you didn't think we'd get this far, then fuck yourself, all right? No, I'm I didn't. I'm kind of surprised we are this far, to be so honest. From why the early are days. you automatically assuming that... Segments of our audience because are I didn't against think we us. Get this far. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I that's more us. Than I them. there was a time like back in the beginning, like the early episodes before oh, we had Toby and Cade Mannix, and it was and uh, it was rough. Uh, it was literally like me every time I talked to Chad, I was like, "When are we going to do the next episode?" And he'd be like, "Well, I have to get everybody together." Yeah, and I just had the feeling I, he was putting the phone down and just not doing anything about it. I, nah. I seem to remember that every time we would resolve to meet. Mm-hmm. Uh, within two weeks, it would be like six months. Before yeah, the- yeah. Well, so. there's a big, if you go back and listen, there's a big gap between uh, six and seven, but it's not noticeable, but it's like a year. Like a yeah, year went really. by between those, because we had nowhere to record. Well, it was our one Seven was the first episode that I was right. on, and basically once I was on an episode, I decided that I was not going to rest until it was out on the internet, and well, so I yeah. just badgered everyone. I, and I remember reason. that. It's, it and also, we had a place to record, because yeah, episodes true. seven through like Four, like 35 or something were all recorded in the same yeah, place. Yeah, they, they were. Like mm, on a set super, schedule. Super nice garage. Uh, my garage. Yeah. No, yeah, I amazing. mean, it was nice. That's why... Um, where Cookie Jail. It was a Cookie, cookie, cookie Jail. The inception of I cookie actually jail. went into that garage the other day and I, I didn't actually realize it was a, an actual garage. Yeah. Because we had hey, all that soundproofing shit man, all over good, the place. I did a good job turning that into not just a garage. But it's... But it's so, I mean, it's so a large room with blankets and a yeah. door table. Right? I think yeah. the best thing is you li- you go back and listen to those episodes and there's one like episode that I'm on where I'm screaming about Superman's half cape in action comics and then in like the next one, Toby's there. It's like we're not even like we're just bitching about how bad it is. And there's oh, like yeah. no yeah. segue. You're just the going from 52. like the new fifty two is gonna suck too. The new fifty two has been out for a year and it's awful. <laughs> yeah. It is awful. We traveled like, forward in time. Yeah. We did. We the did. new fifty two came out and we couldn't talk about comics for it was a year. So we were traumatized. It was, yeah. it was, it was shocking, our man. it was our infinite crisis. We yeah. jumped forward a year with nothing happening in between. That's the hardest That's... thing working at a shop, man. Because I have to be oh, professional. Yeah. I'm not allowed to judge what people oh, do. Yeah. Yeah. So, many, so like people be like, no, I, I had a guy the other day uh, that was like, I mean the Batman or the the Superman, the Superman that's in just the Justice League right now is just, I mean it's pitch perfect. I was like, you what? are wrong. Like, yeah. what? I was like, I was just, I had a, I was like, like, I was like, bl- there was like blood in my mouth. Like, you just call me, you just call me, and be like, like, excuse don't me, sir, react. the gentleman wants to don't talk react. to you, and I would tell him. I don't mean, react. I was like, uh huh. <laughs> Hey, this random person on my cell phone wants <laughs> no. to talk to you. You must be a true Superman fan. So, so you, you must... know how they have professional greeters, like at Walmart or something like that? Um, Honestly, I think you need to be a professional hater. And I, you're just standing yeah. there, like, by the door of the shop. You'd and there's really somebody, like, like <laughs> they want to know how you know, bad this comic like, is. You, know, you see the black just, bag them. Like, <laughs> just, yeah, right? like just they just the call you in <laughs> to go on a rant about how bad a comic is. You're what's wrong with comics. Put over the head, into the back of a black van, down the road, into a ditch. Yeah, and be like, yeah, it's uh, pictures with the comics over their chest, right? Like mm-hmm. this is what they did wrong. Right? Yeah. yeah, don't don't follow their mistakes. Anyway, I just want to be so, right. Uh, them. I think they should be. No, right. I agree because I, I I was working when the new Fifty Two came out at the shop that Eric works at yeah. now, and uh, that was rough. Those were a rough couple yeah. weeks of like yeah, people being man. like, "How's the new stuff?" And us, one, <sighs> sold, we sold out of a lot of it, so we didn't yeah. get a chance to read it. So we're like, "Oh, I don't know." And the stuff that we did read, we were like. 
what the fuck yeah. is this trailer? <laughs> like, yeah. there was a lot of stuff coming I out. I try to stay positive. And for the record, Andrew Chard was really excited about the new 52 when it was, was. first coming out. I wanted it to be so, cool. I was, too. A lot of people were like, you know, like, I saw the co- Superman's costume. I was like, that looks dumb. Why yeah. does everyone have Mandarin collars? That looks dumb. Uh, but, like, but you know what? You know what? Yeah. Over. Partly because the book we're going to talk about, Crisis, I was yeah. like, you know what? Post-Crisis, there's some magic stuff. There's some well, yeah. great Anytime stuff. Anytime you I have a universe but, you know, that is mm-hmm. unmired by continuity, yeah. you can do really cool things yeah. and that's what i was looking forward to in the new 52 was like a post-crisis style environment yeah. where it's like a nice hey, clean we on. reset the slate people are gonna be able to jump on and tell new stories and do new things with the characters except that dc didn't have the balls except to pull the trigger that, like they did back then we don't want to piss off our boy jeff johns right. so his stuff is still in continuity somehow even all the everything batman else stuff, has changed all the batman his, stuff is still in there with the the Justice League. But even Batman, like, they, they've they, pulled back. Because at the yeah. first, they're like, year one is still in canon. Yeah. And now they're doing year zero because they're like, well, it clearly cannot be. Right. Because well, you have James Gordon Jr., who's an infant in that story. Right. Now he's, what, at least, like, 20. It's like, been he five looks years. Like he is. Mid-20s. You know, he yeah. has to be at least. He's, he's, he's a physically an adult. And right. And that would make Batman at least, like, 40. <laughs> right. And <laughs> he's had five, he's had four Robins. Yeah. In yeah. five years, and two of them have died. Yeah, like, that, like, that, that makes him even track, worse. Batman's like, track uh, record is not good in the New 52. He pretty much just got, like, uh, they're like Kleenex, right? He's just, he's got, like, an orphanage on And he's supposed to be, like, like, need like, another one. Yeah, like, the last one. Can you send another young boy over? I've lost another Robin one. He's got Mill. I'm rich, yeah, don't just, ask questions. Just, I'm rich, just send him. Just, just send him, yeah. Are, are you disturbed because you lost your parents at a young age? You'll be perfect, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Please go and put on the brightly colored suit. Yeah, deflect the bullets for me. I'll be in the shadows. Yeah, no, so that's what I looking for was like a post-crisis even though should have known because crisis on infinite earth meticulously sets up the universe oh, absolutely. in the book and we're going to talk about that obviously yeah. but mm-hmm. flashpoint the book that led into the reboot did not set anything up i no. broke i broke my coworker kelly today because she was talking about something in flashpoint and I, I said, in all seriousness, I don't think Flashpoint even happened anymore. She's like, how can that be? I was like, no, I have really, I don't even think Flashpoint yeah, happened yeah. anymore. It did, I think they're so broken. Yeah. I don't think that even happened. And she's because there's a piece at the end, even though yeah, it's an alternate reality. There's a piece at the end where he comes back and he <laughs> gives Batman uh, the letter from his dad, and he's like, all like single tear and all that. And it's like that was supposed to be like in canon that part right, of it. And it's yeah. like I still remember but, but something. But Pandora is there. Like, how could Pandora be like the? She came in in Flashpoint. That's like, what I'm saying, though. They're so broken that, like, it's not in con- I don't. Th- I don't think it is anymore because they've never referenced anything about it, and they've actually. I don't. All right. Well, it, yeah. So editorial thing. Do, do but, you want to actually start yeah. the podcast? Well, I think yeah. that's a good place well, to start. This is good. This is. I think. This I has think been this good is well, everything well, no, we've said but, so far has been related to what we're talking. I about. No, so. it, it has. But yeah. we, we skipped think, our introduction. I think that's my favorite oh, yeah. part. Oh, oh, right. You're right. right. We did. All right. Toby just wants you were to say so his name. excited. I do. We. I got really excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm Andrew Chard. That's how I, it starts. Just, I forgot. I'm Joe Preddy from Earth Four. I'm Tobias Panchin from Earth X. Ooh. I'm uh, Matt McGinnis from Earth Three. Oh, Earth Three. I was gonna say Lex Luthor from Earth Three, uh, also known as Eric Mannix. <laughs> that works. You can you can both be from Earth Three. And I'm Cade Reynolds, who mm-hmm. is like from all of them at once. Oh, well, you're you're I'm ready to go. You were, hard conceived, hard prime here. You were conceived when they were all crossing the, the, over. The crisis on multiple Earths. I'm f- or the crisis on multiple podcasts. I'm from all three podcasts. I guess he's that makes our, me uh, from Earth Prime then. Can I can stuck. I be from Earth S then? Actually, because yeah. that's kind of my favorite one. what is it what is earth s is that the earth? sunshine superman one no that's it's the, the shazam one. Yeah. oh yeah the, the fawcett comics, fawcett yeah. comics. Yeah. Earth. i like that one too all right well and, i guess transition back into yeah we're <clears throat> we're talking about the crisis on infinite earth yeah we are because so, it's our episode 50 special infinite crisis on infinite earth what one. the thing that i think made this book so po- so powerful <laughs> and like work so well is kind of the opposite of what we we're talking about about flashpoint but this book is all set up and closure. Like, it's closing the door on a lot of things, and it's opening new doors and, like, setting up new characters. Half the book is, like, these characters are dying, and they're going away, and we're stripping away a lot of the universe. And the other half of the book, to me, feels like we're going to put new characters in new costumes, we're going to set up new things, and, like, some of those really carried on into the new, into post-crisis modern DC comics, like uh, Wally West is the Flash now. And some of the stuff didn't uh, Firehawk's really... new costume Firehawk's lasted new... for a long time as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Firehawk's new costume. But some of the stuff didn't last mm-hmm. as long. Like, the new Wildcat didn't really ever catch on. 
and uh, there's some other stuff. Well, it, that... it, it is really interesting because they slashed and burned <clears throat> so much of their old continuity. Oh, yeah. And plowed the field and really created room for a lot of new, interesting stories that couldn't have happened mm-hmm. without that happening. Yeah. And Flashpoint really did do the opposite. Not only did they not take anything significant out of continuity, they added a bunch of bullcrap in that just things makes things more confused. Like the right. Wildstorm universe. Why is yeah. Wildstorm Wild oh, in my Don't DC? Even get that's my, still my least favorite thing. Well, and that's the thing. Like, it's if the they had the changed the DC cup, universe yes. to incorporate Wildstorm in a way that made sense, they could have done a lot of new interesting things. Like, why is there an authority and a Justice League, and how do they interact with each other? And yeah. Instead, what they did is they filed everything that made Wildstorm interesting off, and then crammed it into the DC universe in a way that makes no sense. Yeah. Well, in the New Fifty Two, they still have the multiverse, right? <clears throat> like, is that sort they of? Yeah, do, but uh, nobody's most... using it. No. Well, there's Earth really. Two. Yeah, Earth like two, that is a place. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. those characters, a lot of them, also exist in the main universe. I think. Mm, kind of. Uh, well, like there is, there is a Bruce Wayne and. Uh, there's a there's Bruce Wayne and a Clark Kent and uh, at least there was. Um, well, okay, so the Earth Two continuity Earth basically two. it's like there was Superman, there was Batman, there was Wonder Woman in the past, and they've like just recently died, and now all the Golden Age heroes, the original yeah. Green Lantern, Alan Scott, Jay Garrick, uh, Jay Garrick, and all of that stuff, like they are new heroes yeah. now, yeah. like that never happened before. Mm-hmm. But isn't there also a Jay Garrick and an Alan Scott on Earth One, or are they no. completely gone from continuity? No. Yeah, okay. I don't think they're. Shows how much of the used to be, new DC normal. that I've been reading. Yeah. yeah. But, but that is a universe. Yeah, so there and is a the multiverse. Injustice yeah. League or whatever from the evil Earth showed up in the whole Trinity of Sin, whatever uh, thing that's going on right now. So there are other universes oh, yeah, there's out like, yeah, there. In, in, in for every the there's injustice. the crime, the crime there's syndicate. Crime yeah. syndicate. Yeah. Right. There you go. They're supposed to be from Earth 3, at least originally they were, and they, they appear to be like the new version of Earth, Earth 3's... Um, the Earth Three originally, yeah, Lex Luthor was the good guy, uh, and uh, and the Crime Syndicate were like the Evil Justice League, and so they're they're just the updated versions of that with Johnny Quick and Power yeah. Ring and all them and and, and Ultraman and so the Super. So it, it, it the multiverse my... exists, it does, which is a perfect yeah. place to put the Wildstorm yeah. universe right. like, instead of hey, folding it in. Well, to, the the universe. best thing that they did with the old DC in Wildstorm is they basically took like the bleed from Wildstorm and added it into the DC universe. Yeah. And then the Wildstorm was another universe in the DC multiverse. Like, that made so much sense. Yeah. I don't know yeah, why you would not end. keep doing that. Well, and you could do... I mean, the thing is, is... is Well, that's kind of like what Marvel does with their multiverse. Yeah, they just yeah. grab characters yeah. from it when they need them and yeah. move them back when they're done. Uh, yeah, which... <clears throat> or just write stories on the other universe. But... Uh, yeah. The... My, my my ultimate point story. is that it takes a huge amount of courage to do what they did with the crisis. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because like reading this, it's it's really weird. Because I mean, I grew up in the post crisis universe. I mean, yeah, I was like four too. years old when this happened, so I really don't remember the Silver Age except as something that used to exist. And it's really weird reading Crisis on Infinite Earths and seeing all of these characters who you know. Who all know each other, like right. Superman and Blue Beetle and Captain Marvel, all hang out because they're all from the same universe. Except they're not; they're right. actually from different universes. They have no history with each other, and the idea that all of these characters from all over the DC universe are all interacting in one giant crisis is this incredibly big thing that's kind of hard for me to wrap my brain around. Like yeah. just how big this had to have been at the time. Well, well, well that was the, and that it's was not the... just superheroes. You have guys like Jonah Hex and the Rock. Yeah, they had. Yeah, yeah. You have uh, Sergeant, Sergeant Fury. Rock or Sergeant Rock. Yeah, Sergeant yeah. Rock well, and the uh, yeah, yeah. Commandi yeah. was in there. Commandi. Yeah, yeah. They, to, the thing I, mean, I love. Was, oh, oh, go ahead. No, like, I was just gonna say it was it, it spanned the entire DC. Yeah, um, universe. It was Everything. a tour. Yeah, it was yeah. a tour. It was like if like this is one of the first DC books I ever read, actually, and I uh, I th- I think it's a deeper read now that I've read a lot more and I understand yeah. the characters better. But it was a book that coming in as a new reader to DC, I think it was probably 15 years ago, the first time I read this. I totally got it. Again, going back, I'm like, oh, like now I've read a bunch of Commandi, and I love that book. So I'm, yeah. the, the Kirby stuff. So I'm like, I get a lot more excited the, when I reread it and right, see it. Right. But like, I, I had a vague familiarity. At least, like, okay, you know, even if you didn't know the name, you're like, that's some prehistoric kid. I get that oh, it's from cool the future, but it I looks think, like it's you know. This is the first time I've read this where I was like, ah, oh, that's Commandi. That's yeah. totally cool. Like, and have an appreciation well, for that. And the warlords in there. And I had met the first two times I read this, I hadn't read any warlord. Oh like, yeah, oh, still only read a couple. Yeah, I love my grill, but yeah, a lot of that stuff. Out of print, and it's yeah. like there's so much going on here that if you were reading 
DC at the time, I think it would have been awesome. Just oh, to God, see all yeah. your characters well, in a rank. <clears throat> the other thing, too, is they set this up for a year before yeah. it ever happened. Um, they introduced the Monitor... Um, and I mean, yeah, he was they did shit with the Teen Titans. Um, I mean, they did a really good job. I mean, people didn't know who he was. They thought he was a villain at first. They yeah. never showed his face. He was helping out. Um, he was giving information and stuff to villains. They were setting it up. Mm-hmm. I mean, which is awesome. I mean, it's rare now, obviously, because now they just do events every year. It's, yeah. I mean, well, and this, more, this but... was plotted out a year in advance <clears throat> because Crisis on Infinite Earths number one came out one month and the next month they were in a post-crisis world like they you know they didn't stop their books coming out for a year this took an entire year to come out but the crisis happened and then it was new stuff you were getting like post-crisis batman issues like right almost right away like before the story was even done and i think that there was a uh flash i think you got wally west as the flash before this book was even done. Wasn't it New Teen Titans he became the Flash first? I haven't read the New Teen Titans yeah. stuff, but there was a period where he took Barry's outfit in Teen Titans. I listened to a Flash podcast, so uh, that, that's my understanding. Uh, before getting Flash number one, uh, he had taken on the mantle in that yeah, book. That's, yeah, that's... Uh, because yeah, him and Nightwing got the new outfit. Because three, number one, he's already the Flash. Yeah. Like, people are already... Calling him the Flash. Uh, yeah, yeah, and because I, I think it's like the same, and I, I haven't read it, so sorry, I'm not uh, Marvel. I'm a lot more versed than DC, but my understanding is him and Nightwing get the new outfits at the same time, so he gets rid of like Nightwing had that weird the, like, the bamboo huge look, 70s and, yeah, dollar. and he gets yeah. the more streamlined and, yeah. and the same thing. Yeah, that well, because it was like the transition from that into this was uh, they were already planning making Wally West the Flash well before you saw yeah. that in this book, yeah. and so well, that's. Fl- I mean, Flash had been gone. Barry Allen as a Flash had been gone because he like yeah. goes into the future. And that's like I, I've re- have you guys read the trial of Barry Allen? Yeah, because that what? that one I've read mm-hmm. since reading this the last time, and so like it made a lot more sense because he references being gone and again right because he's on trial for time. murder for the murder of his yeah. wife. Well, he's no, he's on, on trial for the Reverse Flash. Murder of the Reverse Flash. Flash married his wife, right. right? Even though his wife comes back. In that story, yeah. Well, because yeah, yeah she's she ran the, away to like the future time travel, yeah. and he gets like it's a all face. incredibly convoluted. Can I say a little side note? He gets a facelift mm-hmm. in that story. Barry Allen does. Yeah, he comes back in Flash Rebirth years later with the, his original face. That always bothered me because they never mentioned it. Well, it's Rebirth like, is Jeff Johns. I know, he I know. Was a non-corporeal well, entity for decades. I know. It just it bothers me. Like I want an editor's box or something. I know. It's yeah. just me being a, like a continuity nerd. But I'm like, come on! I, like I, I mean, I'm glad he came back with the regular face, but like at least acknowledge that it happened. Yeah, anyway, yeah, that's so just like, my side. But, of but again, it's like <laughs> this is the whole reset button on the universe. Like this is them being able to get rid of. The really confusing shit. Because if oh, you yeah. were trying to read The Flash at that point, and like there's so much convoluted stuff going on, and you're like, Barry Allen's gone, and what's happening, or whatever, and the new jumping on point of The Flash number one with Wally West is like very accessible for people. And that's that was the whole yeah. idea, is like, we're going to make this easy for people to understand I've got to say, on. too, I don't know if it's because uh, at a certain point they just knew it was going to happen, but... Uh, I've read a lot, to me, there's a golden period from around like 1969 to maybe... 1983 or so where DC had a ton of really good books in that time and I love a lot of that stuff you had like the Green Arrow Green Lantern mm-hmm. you had like the Daniel Neal and Neil Adams favorite yeah I love that yeah. stuff you had the Daniel Neal and Neil Adams Batman yeah, run totally. you know you had New Teen Titans started yeah. in 1980 you had uh, Paul Levitz on the Legion of Superheroes well, Daniel Neal took the question yeah. from yeah. Uh, what's his face so like uh, really there's nice this golden period cool. but if you get into more like 83 to 85 again I think at this point they must have already had the, the machine in motion like Superman at that point got real bad, real bad. And even the Batman books and a lot of them, it's like the quality just slipped well, the big League time. Justice League wasn't the Justice, Justice League. League was awful. Justice I thought it was Justice League Detroit, Detroit like yeah. like yeah. like you guys have mentioned before. It was Aquaman being the worst ever. Yeah, with these <laughs> stupid characters like Gypsy and whatever that are just hey, vibe. Vibe. shit about vibe. Oh, I, will... God, vibe. <laughs> I love vibe. Oh, oh, not man. for the right reasons. Though. I can't <laughs> think about vibe without thinking about. Uh... Blackest Night. But it was a mess. how awful he you is. Know? And how Jeff Johns just has such a fucking hard on to try and make Vibe badass. And I'm just like, Well, no, Eric, Eric was no, the one like, that told me about this, but they originally had done like a new, it was like a April Fool's joke. Oh, God. At least a <laughs> yes. couple years before. Yeah. 
They uh, had done, yeah, you want to tell? It story? was a, no, yeah. Um, well, th- it, this is a two part thing because it, it gets even like weirder. Like this is, I mean, corporate comics are just uh, to a certain extent very predictable, I guess. But uh, it started at least four or five years ago. Uh, what DC used to have a really good message board uh, directly on their site. They've, yeah. they, for some reason, they got rid of it. It's really stupid. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder why. Oh, but it was even pre New Fifty Two. They got rid of it. But yeah. um, but I used to be on all the time, and, and they had a you know breakdown for every section: Superman, Batman, whatever. And you could just interact with fans. It was really cool. And uh, someone on the Justice League was like. Oh my god, you guys, I heard that um, Jeff Johns and Jim Lee are going to take over Justice League. And at that point, um, I think it was maybe when uh, James Robinson had come on, who yeah. I normally like, but his Justice League run was shit. I agree. Uh, it was it was awful. Um, and I was like, oh, that'd be weird. That'd be really weird if they did the Justice League and that happened, yeah, just a, 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 maybe a couple years later with you know New 52. But yeah, it was around that same time, they're like, dude, uh, and I think it was in Wizard Magazine when there still was a wizard. It was like, yeah, Jeff Johns is going to bring back Vibe. And it was still, there wasn't a new 52 yet. It was still, you know, still like post Infinite Crisis. But it was like this thing, it was a full on. And it was uh, during their April Fool's one, but it's like, yeah, that ended up happening. And it's, so it was like these two things, both involving Jeff Johns that started as jokes, ended up yeah. being things that actually happened. Yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah. It's, it's funny to me. Oh. Yeah. Oh, vibe. So I actually have a question for you guys. Um, since this wasn't, uh, I mean, this is actually going to touch on something that we're going to talk about later in Identity Crisis. But um, which Earth had the Justice League with Hal Jordan, Barry Allen, and Oliver Queen? Earth. One. That's Earth One. That's, that's Earth One. one. That's the, yeah, that's was Earth the one? classic Justice yeah. League. Okay. Well. I mean, yeah. Earth, Earth, Earth yeah. One. Yeah. Earth, Earth One the is the Silver Justice Age Earth. Earth. There was no yeah. Justice League on Earth Two. No, it was wasn't. the Justice Society, Society was on right. Earth Two, because then the Justice right. League was yeah. on Earth One. Well, yeah, there, yeah, Earth Two never had a Justice League. Yeah. Right. Okay. And Earth One never had a Justice Society. It, the DC continuities, it's a, it does get a bit confusing because uh, there was no multiverse to begin with. You know, you had Superman, you had Batman, and they changed due to just editorial mandates and just plain mistakes. So yeah. Superman starts at the Daily Star, his boss is uh george taylor um he's greatly depowered compared to what he is now it's one of those things that as superman got more popular he grew more powerful suddenly he could like fly right he got heat vision all these things he didn't have but then within like the first like 20 issues suddenly it's like perry white and suddenly he's working for the daily planet and there's no fanfare it just kind of like happens yeah i think it's a radio show yeah and that's part of it for sure is the radio show bringing stuff in the tv show in the 50s brought stuff in there's certainly like yeah i think jimmy olsen uh, was on the radio show first he flew for the first time in the yeah yeah Things were blended it in. Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. It introduced Perry the Kent. That radio show's fantastic. It introduced too. Kryptonite. It. it introduced Jimmy Olsen. Like a lot of stuff that we think of as core Superman continuity yeah. now happened on the radio show oh, for sure. first. For right. sure. Mm-hmm. He also defeated okay. the KKK. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because one yeah. of the reasons I ask is that. because I was doing some research on Oliver Queen, who was one of my favorite superheroes, Green Arrow, and I remember before this book, and there's even <clears> a splash page in. I, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths that shows uh, the Green Arrow that had red hair and a big red beard. Um, that was always one of my favorites, and he never appeared again after this happened. But some of the research I was reading was saying that the the yellow bearded Oliver Queen was actually from Earth Two, and the redhead one was from Earth One. But then that didn't make sense because the blonde one was on the justice league on earth one i'm not sure i mean there was a golden age green arrow yeah he didn't uh, have a beard though he but was he was always sure. blonde as far as he I was know. always blonde as far as i know green arrow was one of those guys and i'm sure there's a bunch of multiverse versions there's there's a cool dc wiki that will like has a full-on breakdown for all the different earths and then even like the animated series versions and movie versions and stuff for like every dc character that there is um, so I don't doubt that there's a bunch of different multiverse versions, but uh, the version that we know and love, yes, yeah, started as a Batman clone. He had like, the yeah. arrow card, he the, had Speedy, yeah. and he had an the arrow, arrow cave. cave. The it wasn't arrow until, card. Like, yeah, the, it wasn't until the Denny O'Neill. The arrow plane, book. which yeah. ironically spells airplane yeah, in exactly. Britain. Yeah. <laughs> 
But uh, it wasn't until the yeah the the late sixties, Danny O'Neill, the stuff that they suddenly he had the Van Dyke and he looked more like Robin Hood, and then he suddenly became this left wing kind of activist. Like the political stuff was injected into the book just mm-hmm. to give it a uh, you know specific vibe. Feeling, yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, I love that book. But that's like it's that's kind of, it's kind of funny that that one book right there, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, that is like quintessential Green Arrow for most people. If you go any farther back, he's like not recognizable. Well, he doesn't have the goatee. He's got like the red and the green and like, yeah, he's clean shaven. And well, he's he more was... of a Robin Hood than... He was even rich. He was even rich. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. I mean, he, he definitely went from one to the other. He's, there's a much more like Robin Hood, like traditional folk hero. But this is like what we're talking about right now. This is part of the reason we needed Crisis because, oh, yeah. okay, so... That's how he started. So Superman, like I was starting to say, and I got I got, got myself distracted here. Um, Superman, you get to like 1958, and it's clearly not the same Superman from oh, 1938. No, yeah. But the thing is, uh, so suddenly you it really it starts with the Flash, and that's we'll we'll get more into it. Well, yeah, we talked we talked about this on previous 1956. Episodes, you suddenly get Tino yeah. cover crisis uh, on multi, uh, yeah, showcase was, four is yeah, yeah the, it was the uh the flash year. of two worlds yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but like but uh in if you guys have, have you guys read showcase four before the first yeah. appearance he's reading a comic with jay garrick and yeah. he's like oh that flash well, is so wacky because in the original show in the original showcase when he became the flash he chose the name flash because as a kid yeah he used to read flash comics about jay garrick yeah like that's that's how the universe. But used that to was, work, to yeah. my knowledge, it, it might not have been the first time a multiverse was mentioned, but it was the first one that I read, and that was like such a mind trip. Like, whoa, wait a minute! Like they're in, well, the Flash on of, different. Yeah, the Flash know. of Two Worlds was the first, or Two Earths was the first time that they ever met. Like, yeah, no, that was Flash One Twenty Three. Yeah, when yeah. they met the first time. But I'm saying like his, like Barry Allen's first appearance. Yeah, that was one of the first times that uh, suddenly there was this concept that like, wait, he's he's fake to you. He's not, you know, he's yeah. not like you know. So. And even, I think, before... No, I think it was probably after they introduced the concept of the multiverse. They introduced the writers of the DC universe as characters in the DC universe. Because oh, they would the travel. Earth Prime came in. Yeah, yeah. they would yeah. travel. Yeah. They would yeah. like meet their writers and be like, oh, I'm from Not Your Earth. I write your comics. And they're like, what? I'm like, and Marvel's done that with like the Fantastic Four, Matt Jack Kirby and stuff. But yeah, yeah. that was definitely... yeah. So the, the idea of a multiverse started. But you had a character like Barry Allen that mm-hmm. was... Uh, Clearly, Earth One for the first time, you Earth, know, yeah. with the minute they introduced that concept, it's yeah. like, okay, well, you're clearly this new Flash since we've retroactively decided that we're now writing stories from right. you know, 56 to whatever it is. Uh, there's no clear dividing line other than, you know, Flash. For like Superman, for example, a lot of people go with, um, I think it's Superman 258. It's the first time that uh, the. Fortress of Solitude is actually shown. It's mentioned before that, but it's the first time it's shown, and that's like, I think it's 1958. It's pretty, it's, you know, Silver Age. But, you know, Superman had been around for, yeah, at least 20 years at that point. Yeah. But that, and, and even that, people will argue that it, it might be oh, earlier yeah. or it might be after. Yeah. So it's kind of hard, because I, I, I'm so nerdy. I try to, like, what is the first appearance of Earth 1 Superman? And no one can definitively well, say because you just it was, can't. it was a transition of a character. You yeah. know, like, yeah. he changed so much, and then they fit him into that world. Exactly. Where there are characters that appeared on both Earths, like, um,. Black Canary is one that has like a super complicated yeah, history. Yeah, and Wonder Woman and Hawk, uh, yeah. Hawk, Hawk Hawkman. Man. Yeah, well, like <clears throat> the the Black Canary of Earth One is the daughter of Black Canary of Earth Two. That is also like, a retcon yeah. because originally uh, she crossed over from Earth Two to Earth One after her husband died, and then they retconned it so that she was the daughter. Right, right. but originally yeah. she was the same person. Yeah, yeah and like this, that kind of stuff. Is the whole it's reason confusing, they needed, it's confusing though? It's confusing. The whole yeah. reason they needed a Christ on virus. Just a just a quick tangent about the whole Earth Prime thing in Marvel in the Marvel universe. Marvel Comics is a real place that publishes Marvel Comics, and there was actually a period. I somebody just linked it. I think on Reddit of uh, a scene where Steve Rogers is writing the Captain America comic book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's funny. Because, like, like, um, or, ma- or maybe cannot yeah. do. Or maybe he's drawing it because he is an artist. Yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, there was a time in uh, one of the like 80s Fantastic Fours where kids actually come up with the Fantastic Four comic book and have Reed Richards sign it for them because yeah. he's, the, he's the star of the book. They're writing the stories about... 
Right. And basically, like, a bunch of the Marvel heroes had licensing deals with Marvel Comics, and, like, yeah. they made money that way. Okay, and I've seen, like, there was a book, Stri- Strike Force Moratory, that came out in the 80s. Yeah. So I remember there was something like that, where it's like, they're reading the book, and they're like, oh, that detail's wrong. Like, well, do you really want them to get everything right? <laughs> you and know? like I, I think just recently in the Mike Allred FF, Matt Fraction shows up huh? to interview the Fantastic Four, the, the Ant-Man Fantastic Four, to be able to write a comic book about them. Like, that's he's doing research. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, that happens it's too. really I mean, very meta. Um, and that's the thing, we talked often about how, like, Marvel can kind of juggle that a little bit differently, and yeah. maybe that just speaks to the type of fan that reads Marvel comics versus the type of fan that reads DC yeah. comics. But, but well, the, the the Marvel multiverse is really very different from the multiverse mm-hmm. that DC had because they published things at so many different, like, over this period, and it was so confusing because, like, there was the Earth-1 continuity and the Earth-2 con- continuity, yeah. and they shared characters. One and it of wasn't the reasons... clear that what, what was part of what. Mm-hmm. And with Marvel, like, the 616 has always been the main continuity, right. and yeah, anything always. else is explicitly an alternate universe. Right. One There's of the reasons I feel that Marvel can get away with that is all of their stuff takes place in real... Uh, real places. Um, so, like, you've got people in New York, Detroit, Seattle, um, mm-hmm. and whereas DC, it's they're usually made up places: Metropolis, Gotham, Star City, Star Coast City, City, City yeah. 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 Center Detroit, City, Keystone, Keystone. Detroit, Detroit, which is not real. <clears throat> not a real. That's, that's not, uh, not anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, fans in Detroit. Sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, and but, I feel that that uh, leads to some of the uh, grounding in Marvel Comics that allows them to get away with that. Yeah, because I'm well, again like what Toby says, like it's pretty obvious when it's an alternate universe because they're like it's it's anything that's different from the main. Well, universe. and I also think that I mean most of what Marvel, most of Marvel's modern books, anyways, are all characters that were created in the early sixties. You know? Yeah, starting with. What is it, like, Fantastic Four, right? FF yeah, then, was the beginning of the modern era. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, it's, it was, you didn't have to explain this. Why does Superman look different? Why can he do this now when he couldn't do this then? Why is, and DC, I mean, didn't Golden Age Batman carry a gun? He did, and, originally, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, killed people, even. Straight, yeah, I mean, first, in, the, in his first story. Superman would, would kill people, or at least roof. allow them to die. I mean, yeah, but, yeah like, it was implied that he was, like, letting like, someone shouldn't have been a criminal, building, sucker, right? like, yeah. like, yeah. But uh, DC la- relaunched a bunch of their characters before the multiverse was even a thing, so you had two completely different Green Lanterns running yeah. around, two completely yeah. different yeah. Flashes running around. Yeah. Around, and then they kind of backfilled in the existence of the multiverse later, yeah. which Marvel has never had to deal with. No. Like, if there's 616 Spider-Man, who's Peter Parker, and Ultimate Spider-Man, who's Peter Parker, like, those were created with the idea of a multiverse already firmly established and in yeah, place. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And again, like, that is one of the reasons why the Crisis on Infinite Earths was so important, because they were taking... At that point, fifty years almost of it continuity was, was, that had been kind long, of shakily yeah. assembled mm-hmm. haphazardly, bit by bit, mm-hmm. and going, okay, we are cleaning off the board. We are keeping certain things, but a lot of stuff is gone. Like entire characters and universes and things just never happened. Mm-hmm. Well, and now we have well, one central a, platform to launch everything off of again. It's the first time a lot of them are referred to as like multi as other. Uh, as other realities, as like other things, as in crisis, when they're like, oh yeah, the Fawcett characters, that was another universe. The Charleston character, that was another universe. Yeah, and I, I, I think that that's something that they were trying to do. And there was not to say that there was always problems with continuity because DC used to do great things like the yearly. JSA, JLA crossover books. Oh, those which are great! Was, like awesome. And well, like fun. you guys mentioned, that, yeah, they're they're reprinted now under the crisis on. Uh... Multiple, uh, multiple Earths. Earths. That's yeah. what those those trade paperbacks are, and there's been six of them now. Those are the uh, mostly JSA and JLA team ups, but you'll see like the Crime Syndicate in there mm-hmm. and and stuff like that. But they made it an annual thing after a while to have yeah. the JLA and JSA team up um, because it worked so well and it was and so fun. Yeah, people it. loved it and it yeah. was fun. So there was always like a lot of playfulness that would happen in the multiverse too. But at some point, this you know was able to happen, and they all in the intro. I think Wolfman's talking about how. The birth of the direct market made this possible, possible too, because previous to this, uh, comic books were being ordered by like grocery stores and newsstands yeah, and stuff, no and idea. so the number was important. That's why yeah. they like kept the original Flash numbering 
when they relaunched in the Silver Age. It's why they like, yeah, it's, kept Detective Comics going to like such high numbers was because a, a newsstand like would have faith in a book that had gotten to yeah. 500 plus issues. It's, and if you're launching a new number one... <laughs> in a relaunch heavy running. market, it's funny to hear that people wanted a 400 yeah, issue series wanted, instead like, of like, well, it's not a number really? one, so I'm not going to read it. Yeah. Well, I actually hate that mentality, and I it's hate it. that they relaunch books so much now. Yeah, it's like, actually, actually incredibly confusing if you're trying to organize a collection when you have six different Daredevil number ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I actually think it more, it's more confusing. Find, yeah. find a Daredevil number one. Yeah. Like, we recommend, you know, we've recommended the... Uh, Mark, Mark, Wade. Mark Wade Daredevil, yeah. and it's like if you just search Mar- Daredevil Volume One when online, getting... you get literally like six different. Especially yeah. when they do it in the middle of the run, like when Fanta- during the I think it was the Hickman run when Fantastic Four suddenly went back to issue six hundred. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. it was a significant number. Or when and they had Thor used the became... FF numbering, which was confusing because then FF continued. Yeah. And when, that's uh, the thing is when they uh, when uh, yeah, uh, Thor to... became Journey into Mystery again. Yeah. yeah. And its numbering was in like in the six hundred something, like six hundred and thirty or something. So they were able to do a mini series were basically a new concept. Yeah. Because of the because of the direct market, they could actually do stuff. The like first mini series didn't come out until nineteen seventy nine, and that was World of uh, Krypton, the Superman one. Mm-hmm. Um, but so yeah, it's so you're talking it's it's only been like six or seven years at yeah. this point that they even existed as a thing that. Right. And so <laughs> it this... also occurs to me that DC did a lot of what Marvel did with Marvel What If, mm-hmm. but it wasn't its own series, nor was it marked. It was like, this is an imaginary story where something crazy happens. Well, I mean, before... But those were just regular issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before this, it was just, if you had a great story that you wanted to tell, you, could just tell you, it. you told it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like and... Superman marrying Lana Lang, or... His cousin. Or, or his mermaid girlfriend. Uh, yeah, like, Lower or Lemers. dying oh, or something. Man. I mean, there's there's definitely instances of Superman dying before the big death of Superman in the well, early 90s. Oh, oh yeah. They're always uh, imaginary stories. I mean, yeah, imaginary they happen many stories, times. Batman well, whatever dying, happened in The Man stories. of Tomorrow. But oh, even before Even that, that one they oh, say yeah, is an imaginary yeah, story, but God, that's my favorite one. Oh, that's, well, you know. It's yeah, it's great. So good. I think the most interesting thing about reading this and reading Wolfman's introduction is... About how this kind of the genesis of this idea was reading Justice League in the 60s and seeing the JLA, his favorite issues being the JLA and the JSA teaming up and just seeing all mm-hmm. those characters on the page and him going, I want all of the characters on the page. And I just. Well, that's uh, half the fun of the series. Yeah. Like literally just, just seeing the, all of them there. The who's who or the where's Waldo of like <laughs> trying to figure like, out who all of the yeah, characters splash are. Splash pages with 200 plus characters on them. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I'll tell you something. The first time I read this was about six six years ago. And I'd, I'd read pieces of it before. But mm-hmm. the first time I actually sat down as an adult and to read it like cover to cover, I was like, Poltroon. Nobody fucking talks like that. You, know, you, know, you have Simon like doing the, the like, I will go and get the bad guy. Nobody knows how powerful I am. <laughs> and it's very like, it, it was it They're was like, difficult because people hadn't talked like that in comic books for quite a while. But this is the third or fourth time I've read it since then. And I, I find it really fucking charming now. It's like it's much easier for me to read right now. And it doesn't seem nearly as stilted. And I, it, it's even in that, written in that very 80s way because mm-hmm. you have books that came out in the 80s that aren't written like this this is definitely marv wolfman writing here and like his influence because when he started writing uh the characters still have voice in here and they're still like identifiably different characters which is not something you got a lot in the silver age well some of them i do notice a lot that some of the characters in here are very easily like well yeah could be anyone i mean they have a lot of characters in here have Almost no personality whatsoever. But I mean, they you're just like are a Yeah, exactly. I mean, so, like I mean, that's like, gonna happen. Well, that could be a flaw of a book of this size and scope. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's mm. only so much screen time and, and so many actors on the stage. You, you know, uh, the thing that Perez does well. And as I reread this, I really thought, like, who else could have done this? I, I yeah. think Perez like had to do this book because yeah. that's kind of his forte. But um, and he did an incredible job. Oh, the art he, he in this did. is really, oh, yeah. really good. It's, it's yeah. great. It's not it's, just good; it's consistently it's good. Con- yeah, it yeah, is. It is true. And I fucking love. One of the things I was struck by reading at this time is I really like a lot of the character designs in there. Oh I yeah, love Harbingers. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's one hundred percent different from modern character design aesthetic. Yeah, like it really is the like spandex and capes and tights like a design aesthetic that has just completely disappeared where everybody's like got their logos on their chest like it really does feel like something from 
a different time. I mean, yeah. it, it definitely has a nostalgic feel to it. Yes. Like, I mean, so it, it reminds me of what I, not, not so much what I read of superheroes when I was a kid, but like what I thought of superheroes Super, when yeah. I was yeah. a kid. My idea of what superheroes were. And I was, I was reading this sitting next to Joe this morning and uh, I kept, <laughs> in every bed. time, every, in bed, <laughs> and every time uh, Harbinger or, uh, don't you fucking judge us. <laughs> That's how we like to read. We like to snug. Um, and you were reading uh, Identity Crisis, did, yeah. and I was reading Crisis on Infinite Earths. And, um, like, anytime the Harbinger or the Monitor or the Anti-Monitor would show up, like, new characters for this series, uh, I would lean over and, like, show Joe how cool the yeah, character just, design was. I was like, look at this character design. Like, look how like, I love so the Monitor different. in this. Look at the character. And I'm like, it really is a super... It's a great character design. But Super he looks clean. so different than everybody else in the book, yeah. too, which is what works so well, is he's supposed to be a character oh, that's yeah. like a billion years old from an old, another time and another place, and he feels like it. Yeah. He feels different, and Absolutely. I think that character design is really smart in this series. Yeah. Um, I think the art's really amazing. Um, we... I don't know. We could probably talk for a long time about how just a, a an addendum too. Uh, they've used the anti monitor since and things like Sinistro Core War and stuff like that. Like year, like twenty years later, and uh, even though a lot of the things in this book would be certainly dated by today's standards, the anti monitor, you know, with the Green Lantern Core and all that, like still looked badass and yeah. still oh, like, looked a, really a creepy. Well, they, made yeah. yellow, yeah. they gave him a yellow ring. Yeah. 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 I think that I don't know. This book has so much so much art that is so interesting to look at yeah. that, like every page is absolutely a feast for the eyes well that's what know? makes it so this book is incredibly dense and can be difficult to read all at once because not only is it very dialogue heavy and very but, text box heavy and very oh, text yeah. box and heavy and thought yeah. bubbles it's also every <laughs> panel is just fucking stuffed to the gills with information so mm-hmm. you really have to like look at a page two or three times to this get book is everything. on 11 the entire time yeah oh, it yeah. really I mean, is yeah I, I'm, I'm just flipping flipping to a, I'm just looking to a random page and there's 13 panels yeah yeah I mean, when, I, when I woke up earlier today, I still had three issues to read of this, mm-hmm. and it took me over two and a half hours to yeah, read Yeah, I, I was just going to yeah. say, this is the kind of book that, uh, in the perfect scenario, I would say, read an issue a day. Oh, yeah. yeah that's or less. less. Yeah. I started doing that, and then I ran out of days. Somehow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm uh, saying if you can. Yeah, I mean, we've crammed a lot of we're, reading into We're reading this. it on a deadline, but you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, no, no. The really interesting thing about the art to me that I noticed after having read Uncanny X-Force and talking about the coloring in that mm-hmm. and the use of light and shadow and how important that was to the mood, how weird the coloring is to me now reading this because everything is lit with this omnipresent light. Like yeah. even when they're, you know, it's nighttime and you know, they're in the middle of nowhere. They're out in space. Like everybody is lit with floodlights. Yeah, and it gives gave it to me a very operatic feel. Like, yeah, it oh, yeah. felt Definitely. like I was Cinematic watching almost. a play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there is that very kind of cinematic quality to the dialogue and the costumes and just the arc of the story that really does make it feel to me like I am watching a play. I really well, and, and the page layout and the panels. I mean, there's yeah. so many establishing panels. Yeah. And, I mean, there's times where it zooms into people's faces um, when they're, you know, when they're having conversations and yeah, things and like there, that. There's a lot of times where it's just like, and there's a group of five people who are all on the stage together and they're having a conversation about what's going on. And then they go off the stage and a different group of people comes on. Yeah, and yeah. also just like the words showing up. And like feels very much like a a, a narrator, yeah. You know, like a a Greek chorus, yeah. Like it, uh, there's so many the some of those lines of dialogue, quote unquote, the words you're reading aren't narrated by anyone, yeah. And no one is like that is clearly the narrator or the writer telling you like. This is stuff. Pay attention, because like, there's a lot of shit gonna no, be no, flying yeah. at your face pretty soon. It's appropriately dramatic. I yeah. think this is it's it's. Uh, Wolfman and Perez both have a very good idea of what they're laying out here and they know what they want you to see and they know how they want you to see that and so it's appropriately dramatic. I never Mm -hmm. feel like... well, I mean, I guess also... the dialogue can be a little melodramatic at times, but I oh, think yeah. that's largely a, a function of when it was written. Mm-hmm. I I think that everything is conveyed in a way to to give you this kind of cinematic feel. I think that's part of the big charm of it is that it feels like it's on a stage, you know. 
And I love that about this book. I love how cinematic it's, it feels. It's also I so just, dense yeah. that they actually had three other people who supplemented the uh, additional pencils, mm -hmm. additional inks, um, and additional lighting effects, I think it was. They also had a researcher. Yeah. Like, this book had a guy who, like, went through all of DC history, and, like, every character you see in this book, basically, that has a line of dialogue or says a thing, they're all characters from things. Uh, my favorite is at the detective convention. Isn't that? That's the thing that happens in this book, right? Like, yes. I was reading that. <laughs> that is. Um, there's, like, a, and Harvey Bullock is, like, he's there, and they all have name tags on, and I'm reading them. Those are all detectives from other yeah. DC series, like all of those guys, all the newscasters, like obviously Lana Lang is really obvious where she's from, but all of those people, somebody was like, oh, you need the name of like a a news reporter or a traffic desk worker or something? Like, oh, here's one from this issue of The Flash from 40 years ago. Like, yeah. that was his job, was to like go do that. Andrew's God, secret I, gene, dream job. Oh, it is I, absolutely I, my I, dream like, job. Like, I, I would honestly be... call this the ring cycle mm -hmm. of comic books. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I just really want to see a stage production of this now. That would, yeah. I think that oh would be God, awesome. Oh my God, it would be amazing. That would be so cool. It would be amazing. I'm could gonna, could I'm... they sing it? Oh could yeah. They, and and could the narrator talk like a 40s radio announcer? I think that the, all those... You mean like this? <laughs> yeah, that. Meanwhile, yeah. On, that's the, like a 20. on the monitors. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the monitor's spaceship, flying around space, <laughs> the anti-monitor appears. I don't want to think more like the outer limits or the twilight zone. Okay, so more Sterling, but less less not quite Rod Sterling. Like this is supposed to be really creepy, but that sense of like gravitas, like these are the most important things that have ever happened. So like you need to understand like how important it was. Yeah, like good evening. Also, I want the all the stuff. That I really do want it sung like that no, it's operatic, be. It's like sung be. background stuff. I'm gonna be working on this for the next twelve years. I so stay think, tuned, okay, guys. That's it. That's it. Like, Liam want, Neeson I'm, should narrate this uh, comic book. Uh, Liam Neeson. I can feel that. He does Liam have Liam a particular Neeson, set of yeah. skills. That's a nightmare for people that love narration. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess not a nightmare, but a dream come true. I don't know. I Something. Don't know. A guess. nightmare dream. I will forever. As I, Liam Neeson has been in some amazing, just absolutely fantastic <laughs> films, and I will forever associate him with Taken. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I think because I had zero. I had zero. Because fucking, it became a meme is really it, it what it is. It did become a meme, but I had like, zero right. expectation for that movie, and I, re I walked and away really enjoying it. fucking kicks ass yeah, in that no, movie. Great. I, uh, not Taken actually... 2, because that's the same exact movie no, as no, Taken no, no, 1, except not as good. I wanted to watch Taken 2 the other day. I just put Taken 1 into my... Yeah. In my and it's Taken 2, baby. That. I, I um, particularly enjoy him in Wolf Puncher, so that's <laughs> like, I'm a fan of him in that. Always. So yes, Liam Neeson is the narrator, mm -hmm. and uh, I think... Yeah. yeah, we'll get we'll back to this. this. We'll, we'll, get we'll back. have a full we'll... casting call of a thousand people. <laughs> for, Can you just imagine uh, the well, there's cast? A, there's of a lot of roles well. that we could double cast. Oh yeah, because you true. just get the same. Because it's the same person. You just put some makeup on to make them look older. Yeah, I just or, really would know, be stuck for the Kamandi scene where mm -hmm. like Solovar is wounded and he's leaving, and I just oh. really want to see like Kamandi just like. Yeah. Do this like eighties power battle. Don't leave because, me, uh, hey, don't leave man. Me. Don't it's leave me alone. Like a mom and dad. That'd be amazing. Don't leave no, me alone. It's, it's an opera. So yeah, I have yeah. to sing all the dialogue. Yeah, that's, be, uh, be, <laughs> that's that's you heard it here first. All right. All right. Don't leave me, Salomon. Quick speed. Must get to the arrow car. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, you know it's gonna be a musical, did you? Uh, we've opened a can of worms. Yeah. Amazing. We cannot seal that. We're gonna oh, sing the whole next. What's the lead episode? singer of the darkness? He's gonna play. Oh my oh god! My, he's gonna play. Come on, man! Oh, oh, I love him. So many tight Justin, pants. Justin, uh, uh, Justin, something or other. I can't uh, remember. No, I, I know exactly. Justin Darkness. No. Justin, Justin Darkness. <laughs> Justin I, something or other. Only yeah. thing called the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> I love his solo stuff. Uh, is it Hawkins? No. Maybe it is. Uh, something maybe like Justin that. Hawkins, I don't know. It's I just saw like him that. on Top Gear. It was weird. Yeah. And he, he did really well. I like that the cover that they show on that episode. It's good. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. But yeah, so we'll be working on that. So stay tuned <laughs> for our <laughs> stage production. <laughs> well, I don't know. Do you guys want to talk about kind of how this book works mechanically, like from the beginning, and kind of just break down a little bit of how you thought the... Like, the book was... Because it's laid out in a very specific way. Yeah. And it happens... Everything that happens is clearly happening 
in a sequence of events that's been pre-planned for a long time. And there's oh. a lot of care taken to make the book work in that order. Well, and it's fearless, which is why it works, right? Yeah. Like, Wolfman comes in and he's like, this shit has to go. Mm-hmm. And even though, like he says in the introduction, he's like, I killed like over a thousand worlds or something, right? Like mm. full of heroes. And I try not to think about that because yeah. he did, but that's, he's absolutely fucking fearless. He's not like, I really like this little bit of Batman where he yeah. did this. So I'm just going to keep that. He's like, yeah. no, fuck it. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. I mean, right? that took so much foresight, really. Yeah. Uh, and I, what I like is that they set the pace right out of the gate. I mean, it mm-hmm. starts with. Worlds, worlds die, yeah. literally dying. Yeah. yeah, the first page. I mean, it's well, not. It's not like an establishing. Well, I mean, they throw you right into the crime that, that, that does feel kind of establishing to me. Like I yeah. actually f- f- find this book incredibly slow paced. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because it's just kind of this slow, inexorable building up, of, which like, is terrible. All of, the, like, all of these terrible things are happening, and they don't know about it, and it builds mm-hmm. slowly, and then the and, worlds are dying, and they don't know what's well, going and, on, and, and they're kind of casting around and the threat slowly become present and I, it's like the monitors I- established in like issue three or four or something yeah. like no, that two. Like, two. Two. Two, yeah. yeah but like they don't actually encounter him or do anything with him for like a long time but yeah. i feel like that's that has more to do with we're used to comics written the way they are now yeah, yeah. yeah. versus it really being that it was that slow i mean things are happening oh yeah absolutely it's, it's, things yeah, are happening like, but days the pace, are going by pace is changing a lot I, and, too in this book well, and i feel like that i mean that's Part of that adds to the gravitas of it. I mean, yeah, yeah. because he, times times going by. Um, I mean, like I said, I think that it just feels more slow now because we're so used to. I mean, this book now would be a, could be well, a four hundred, issue. It'd be like a hundred issues. Yeah. Well, well uh, yeah. With decompression. The first, I was gonna say honestly, well, before four issues, issues yeah. it'd be written by Jeff Johns. As I read, read it, I was thinking, yeah, if, ben, if Bendis it. or Johns wrote this, it would take a full year to come out. Well, uh, and they would have would... like uh, 100 tie-in issues for yeah. it, yeah. and everything and would be would... a splash page. And they would, would go out yeah. of their way to, to like emphasize the least important parts and to try and make it as morbid as awful as and possible. And there'd be a ton and of deaths and resurrections on which, yeah, you would, like, exactly. Believe I mean, it would pretty much be it would be civil now. war meets fucking. Uh, Black so, is, it's Black as Night. Black is right? Night. Nice they, the... they would have the or House of, of Supergirl meets, in an Black issue, is and then they would have a six-issue miniseries Cold. titled yeah. The Death of Supergirl, and then they would have yeah, another yeah. six-issue would... miniseries called The Aftermath of the Death of Supergirl. The Death of the exactly. Death for Supergirl. <laughs> I, <laughs> the three I think... issues of Flash vibrating from... <laughs> yeah. I think I sort of agree with both of you, because... I feel like a ton is happening in this book, and that makes it feel faster than a lot of modern comics in which not a lot happens per issue. Like, a shit ton happens in every issue. But at the same time, a lot of time goes by in the series. Like, a lot of stuff has to happen. So, like, the pace does feel slow, especially at moments when, like, you feel like the stakes cannot get any higher. Like, they're at... They're at the Anna Monitor's fortress. Like, they're storming the gates. Like, shit's going wrong. Supergirl's fighting for her life, and the two Supermans, and everybody's fighting outside. And then when Supergirl dies, and the Anti Monitor runs away, because he's like, oh, I've been defeated. I need to go rebuild and go, you know, refocus my energy. They have fucking time for a funeral for Supergirl, and they slow down because they think they've kind of won. And so, like, yeah, they, it, it feels like that's the end. But then there's still, like, six more issues. Issues after yeah. that, well, not just like, six more issues. They're, they fight the anti monitor like five times. Yeah, so, like honestly, like by the, I get the time I get to the back half of this series, like I'm just so ready for it to be over because like yeah. they fight the anti monitor and they kill him, but he's not actually dead because mm-hmm. he has another form, and then he's energy, and then they destroy the energy form, and then everybody's like, "Up, oh, it's the end," and they're yeah. like doing epilogue stuff, and then he's like, "No, I'm actually still around." Yeah, and that's why I like, feel it really feels interminable. It it does feel like it has like Return of the King syndrome, where it's like, <laughs> "Just be <laughs> done it, now." It, like, I get it. I know how it ends now. Yeah, you kind of told me. Goes right? At a certain point, and it's just and... like. It's like a like a vanilla World of Warcraft raid. Like there's a hundred mm-hmm. fucking heroes and they're all blasting him at once. And yeah. it's just like okay, everybody pound on the giant evil thing. Yeah, no, and that's and what's... like it really feels a little bit unsatisfying to me. Yeah. But I wanted to mention before we get too far away from it, I really actually like the d- way that the death of Supergirl is handled in this oh, because she goes out as a hero. Oh, oh absolutely. absolutely, she accomplishes yeah. goals. Like it is oh, yeah. no sense of fridging. No. She no. dies like a hero. No, I got. She... I got to say though, uh, the biggest bummer of this book 
is uh, after this, no one remembers her. That's yeah. the, yeah. the coolest yeah. thing about this. But I well, guess because that's everybody kind of the whole remembers nature of why they did it. Yeah. Everyone remembers Barry, Barry during next yeah. issue dying. That's like one of my and I and that was just part of it was Superman. The whole editorial mandate at that point was yeah. moving forward after this. Because at this point, there was a legion of super pets. There was like a right. super monkey and a super horse. And Beppo, Beppo the super Beppo, monkey. There was. There was Beppo, there fuck with Beppo, the man. Streaky the cat. There, there, you can't fuck with a regular crypto, chimpanzee. You don't yeah. want to be fucking um, with one from Krypton, There was man. a legion of superheroes was a big thing. There were Superboy comics, um, as well as the legion comics that Superboy was in. The Superman. There was also there was a super like horse. Super, they I don't wanted know why. Superman to go back to being the only Kryptonian, the yep. only survivor. They even did away with the legion of superheroes and the Superboy stuff. So it's like he starts as a man, as which is you know more <laughs> akin to like his his golden age origin, mm-hmm. um, but because of that, Supergirl not only died because uh, in this in story, yeah, it was a great death. But the bummer is afterwards, it's like oh Barry went on as a hero, and then it's like Supergirl, huh? There was no Supergirl. There was never a Supergirl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there was never. But that, that there's was a lot. That actually, most of the characters that die, Barry's the exception to that because yeah. most yeah. of the characters that die in this, like they Earth, get, Earth yeah. Two, Robin and Huntress, which I find to be like really sad, and happens kind of off and panel. And it does. And you just, yeah, and who? Cole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing to say. I don't I don't who the fuck is that? But anyway, um, like a lot, there's a number of people who die after all the universes get merged together mm-hmm. who don't, like, they don't have a home reality anymore. And yeah. And they just kind of vanish and everybody forgets that they existed. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I got to say, too, um, there's, there's a couple things that always bothered me because I, I love this story, but there's a, when all the post crisis stuff happens, like, the the Man of Steel Superman is not like the Superman at the end of Crisis. Right. And like the 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 Earth One Batman is not the same one from Crisis. Mm-hmm. Like they just kind of like jump on and it's different. It's it's really confusing. Even reading like on wikis and fan made things are like they lived their lives until they were replaced. But like what? Like that? I don't know. It's like. Because I love Crisis, and I get why they did it, but, like, there, there's a piece that Crisis didn't fill for me. There's a, mm-hmm. it's still a gap there. Um, and it's really weird, because, like you were saying, Chard, like, uh, they they kept con- doing the books. It's weird, because um, I read Year One years ago, which is one of my all-time favorite Batman stories. It's a great one. And I always assumed at that point that set the tone for Batman, but it didn't. Because if you read 408 mm. through whatever, there's, like, at least a year after that, it goes it's, right back to pre It's behind style. you in a box if you want to dig it up. No, I'm just kidding. Well, like, uh, <laughs> it actually is. But, but have you uh, read some of the stuff, like, right after, immediately after yeah. year one? It goes right back to pre-crisis well, stuff. Well, and that's, weird. that's one of the things I've been trying to get. Uh, the One of the only comics I still collect are, like, old Batman stuff, because I really love it. And so I'm trying to get, like, all the post-crisis Batman stories. Yeah. And you're right. It feels so weird, because they have Jim Aparo quite... art again, and it's it's like the Joker is all smiling, and, like, it, it's like... It's jarring because it's immediately after. Yeah, you they know, still it, haven't it, quite it established him. Yeah, it, him. Take, it takes them a couple of years yeah. after yeah. the crisis to really get a handle on what well, the continuity uh, is. Earth... Or year one happens in eighty eight, right? Isn't 87. that eighty seven? Eighty seven. Yeah, so it's not right away. It's not but right even, away. It's not right away. But even after they do it, like they're still growing pains. Yeah, uh, which makes sense. But yeah, the thing that and the the thing is they'll reference crisis, but they clearly they clearly remember it differently than how it happened. Like it's like yeah. they know that there was a anti monitor. And he tried to like destroy the universe, but of course to them it was the, one the universe. composite yeah. the new Earth. Uh, I kind of wish, and maybe they did go back and I just haven't read that story, but I kind of wish we would have gotten to see, like, what their version I, of that was. I don't know that that ever happened, and it seems like whenever they refer to it, they're like, oh, yeah, that big crisis in space, and Barry died, and nobody remembers what yeah, happened. Yeah, and it's very vague, yeah. intentionally so. But, uh, yeah, the, the piece I always wish was, like, I, I wish I had the story of... Uh, their perception after yeah after crisis because it's like because uh, it ends and like there's this whole thing and then well, they're somehow they're morphed into different characters right yeah. and even after the end and like I wish there was some I don't know well, this, because, the continuity nerd in me wants to know why well because you look it. at like Earth or uh, Year One Batman and Man of Steel Superman yeah. those happen in their minds before the crisis it, somehow yeah, yeah. like somehow yeah. they had those memories and exactly. then the yeah. crisis happens yeah. at some point and you don't know what year in Batman's life it is cuz yeah. Nightwing's there so it's clearly later in Batman's career in which that ha- so there's like a lot i mean it doesn't quite exactly work out 
Which is a good point. So it, it didn't, you know, it, it, it created its own problems into itself. But I, I do think ultimately it did succeed at its goal. Of oh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Because it gave them the opportunity. With, I, yeah. Well, it gave them the opportunity to tell new stories. Like, it gave them the opportunity to say, we're going back to Batman at the beginning. We're going back to Superman yeah. right when he started being Superman, which is something they hadn't been able to do Definitely. ever. Because even the appearance of Silver Age Superman is well into his career because it is, they, yeah. you know, and even that's again, like we already said, that's yeah. not super clear either. So right. it's, you know, so it's they fun. never really had the opportunity to kind of tell that great year one Superman, like Superman at the beginning of his career yeah. type stories. So, and also the sad thing too, is that there's a great romance between Supergirl and Brainiac five, right? Yeah. Is it? yeah. Yeah. And so like, he's like visibly upset by Supergirl's death, and then like the Legion goes away after Crisis. Man, you know what they did post uh, Infinite Crisis? Oh, they teased me so bad. Oh, they DC. sent they sent Kara forward in time. They, to yeah, the they Legion. did. And the thing is, like, he keeps acting like he remembers her, mm-hmm. and they start they're doing a flirtation, and then I'm like, because. Uh, I guess we should mention, I don't know if we've ever mentioned it on the show before, but so what they did with Superman, they stripped everything down, right? They get to the point where they introduce this new Supergirl in 1988, but it's this protoplasm being. It's like this weird gelatinous yeah, shape-shifting like, thing. Yeah. And that's the Supergirl for like years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then like at some point, Peter David writes the series that I hear is actually really good. I've never read it, but she like somehow bonds with some like angel. And I don't yeah. know. It sounds it convoluted in its own way. It's so there, weird. There's, yeah. a, there's a version of Supergirl in the 80s and 90s, but yeah. it's not like She's the not biological... Not yeah, Kryptonian. Kryptonian. This not... stuff is actually talked about in the introduction to the Superman Batman yeah. Return of Superman. Yeah, oh, right. That's, yeah. In the that's introduction, when, they yeah, actually talk that's about when she actually her comes history. Back, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So that's that's exactly a good point, Cade. So um, and that was what like 2004. So it was yeah. it was yeah. pre Infinite Crisis, but so suddenly they realize, um, hey, there is no. Real, bio, like, there's no Kara Zor El. There's no yeah, biological. Yeah, it was a big deal when she came back but was because she was Kara Zor El. It yeah. was like, who had not been in yeah, comics for almost 20 years at that yeah. point. Mm-hmm. And, and when she showed up, it was in a hailstorm of crypt- multicolored yeah. kryptonite, yeah. which yeah. is another thing that at post crisis they're like, no, there's only green kryptonite. Yeah. Yeah. And there were a lot of people wondering if she was somehow Kara Zor El <laughs> from. The mul- the old multiverse that had come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. I don't think it was a thread that they ever really picked no. up. No, they her. didn't. But here's uh, so so they so they introduced the the Kara Zor El, and in this version, uh, you know, again, this post crisis Superman is a little different than Earth One Superman. Uh, so this is him meeting his cousin for the first time. He he's aware of the protoplasm one, but he's like, oh my god, there's a, your cousin. He she meets the Legion of Superheroes, and they do this whole story where it's kind of teased like that. I know you. Mm-hmm. And I was so excited. I was like, "Oh God, oh God, please do the pre-crisis stuff." Yeah. I was like freaking, and they never, they never went there. And yeah. then the New Fifty Two started, and I was like, "Ah, it's never gonna happen now!" Damn you, DC! But I, I'm a big Legion fan, I'm yeah. a huge Legion fan, and as I, I like, I love, I love post-crisis. But again, I'm a continuity nerd, so like, if they had been like, "Yeah, I am," like the pre-crisis, like I would have. King died. I would have been like, yeah. oh, I would have fainted and been like, yes! <laughs> that was like a thing. For that those of you that can't tell, he's touching I'm himself. I'm rubbing myself a lot. He's not wearing his pants for anymore. real. It's, he's been slowly undressing over this whole time. He's had a lot of donuts No, for real, like... This is the thing. Uh, motherfucking when, when there was the DC boards, like people would like argue about it, like this is pre crisis Kara just like resurrected, like oh mm-hmm. no, it's a brand new character. She was also a it's lot based stronger on... than Superman. And, and here's that's the, the thing. That was an interesting which, thing. Which it would be pre crisis. She would be have that power set. Yes. See, they now, could have done it. Ah, oh, they should have done it. <laughs> DC. <laughs> <laughs> right, no. Okay, so here's the funny thing about them never explaining it. Is it got the nerds so talking about it so much that it actually boosted sales by them yeah. not explaining exactly what? Oh, yeah, happened. they know what they're doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Just people, yeah. <clears throat> well, just, and I mean, this is, I think, crisis uh, to me kind of shows something very interesting, right? Which is that people will bitch and complain and say, "Don't you fucking do this? Don't you change it? I won't read it," but, but, but they will. Right? Yeah, like they will. Oh, it's like you those can people kill Bruce go, Wayne, I don't know if and you, you can make Dick Grayson Batman, and people will still read so it. You, you, ever, you, get, you can fucking get rid of all of DC continuity and make a composite Earth where there's only ever been one continuity, and people will still read comic books after that because people don't like change until after it's happened and it becomes the norm, and then they're yeah. fine with it. Well, 
If you've ever worked at a retail establishment, like many of us have, you yeah. always get those customers that are like, well, fuck that, I'm never coming back. And then yeah, two days later, yeah. there they are. Because Superior is, Spider-Man is my favorite no, uh, recent yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, fuck this, I will never read a comic again. And they'll walk out with their Amazing <laughs> 700, like, kiss my ass. And it's like, I wait a month. I'm, I'm going to check out number one. I'm just going to check it out. I'm going to yeah. check out Superior number one, but I'm going to hate it. I'm going to check it out and read it. Then, they, then, like, I'll see him, like, six months later, like, bro, that Superior Spider-Man is my favorite book. I'm like, yeah. Not like that. cool. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. That's cool. I will remember forever how much butthurt there was over Superior Spider-Man. Oh, oh yeah. So yeah. much. And it's probably going to end in about three months here because they yeah. released Amazing Spider-Man number one in, in previews. Yeah. April. It's, it's and a, it's I guarantee... Well, no, no. It's no, no, no Amazing's yeah. coming back, but there's a rumor that a Superior will get a relaunch. But... I guarantee you, 10, 15 years from now, Superior Spider-Man will be remembered as like one of the great classic yeah. Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. This is one of the oh, great, yeah. surpri- hey. the, mo- the most surprising thing Toby ever said to me. We were talking, he's like, I'm, th- I'm going to check out the Superior Spider-Man. And I'm like, oh, this should be good. Well, specifically, uh, like I'd so, heard all the butthurt over Amazing Spider-Man uh, number 700. And I'm like, it sounds really bad. I'm going to check it out just to see, see how what's bad going it is. on. And I, the next time I see him, I'm like, so, snicker, snicker, how is Superior Spider-Man? He's like, it's really good. And I'm yeah. like, I, it didn't Where's compute. Tony? I felt yeah, like, like sorry, uh, <laughs> there's that, there's actually, that episode of Star Joe's Trek already called... already breathing in to start telling you. Like, I, I was, I was, no, no, I was, no, I was, I was getting ready because, you know, Toby very rarely, Toby very rarely gets uh, a head full of steam. Uh, and... Uh, he, well, I'm I remember everyone is confused because I'm trying to tell Joe to talk into talk the, into mic the microphone. Of wow. the and I thought you were pointing at the door. Is, is that, I was like, like what's happening? happening? I'm not. I'm not talking into the mic because Toby is sitting in the wrong fucking place. <laughs> is what's happening, and so it's his fault. So you should all right. blame him it's, when you can't yeah, hear me. It, well, okay. So, uh, um, Toby, I have some good news for you though. Coming up in July 2012, it's Superior Spider Month. <laughs> I what I speeder love month. what I love was month. when Toby told me that story. He told me I went into it looking for everything that was wrong with the book, which is, yeah. I, well, sometimes that's, that's, that's how wanted, Toby reads books. I wanted to get mad <laughs> Most of the time, that's how he reads books. Yeah, it actually and you couldn't. It made me mad because I gave up on Spider Man after Brand New Day. One more. One day, more day. One yeah. more day. Whatever it was. Yeah, I'll move. <laughs> and Actually, I've that's when Dan Slott jumped on the and book. We, everyone and everyone should have read it then. Like, now I have to go back and read seven years of Spider-Man continuity. It's I good. Guess. But not back in black. No, that was before. That was, that was, that was pretty... Say, okay, because yeah. that was all. Uh, I, I hated, like, seriously, I can I hated count. One More Day so much, I meant to drop it from my file. But I, I'm the type of customer that only goes in every two, two or three months and gets my file. It's mm-hmm. really bad, especially now that I work at a comic shop. But uh, I, I waited, and I went down to Danger Room, and when they did Brand New Day, the, the right afterwards, yeah. it, it was coming out three times a month. Right. And so I had, like, 12 of them in there, and I was like, oh, I'm not going to put these back. I'll buy them. I'll buy them. Because I like the guys. On, they're, they're yeah. Cool. So, so I bought That's them, our local and I read them, store. and I was like, holy shit, this is really good. Like, I hated One More Day, and I still hate that they did it. Every once in a while, I'll reread it just to, like, remind it's just myself. Just curse man like it's the bad. man cannot win but brand new day was really good well it was kind of what we're talking about with crisis like really? that was the spider-man's crisis but if crisis had it sucked was. a giant dick like <laughs> <laughs> like that it's that true. book it's was true. that book was a reset button on peter parker's life in a lot of ways they took away a lot of the kind of extraneous elements from it I wish that had been Aunt May, but well, you know for what? some reason you she for can fucking it. live for Thank eight thousand years. It. Joe and I both have an undying but before, hate like, for Aunt after May. After <laughs> my my least favorite Marvel character of all time is Jean Grey, and I I think if you go back and listen, you'll find that's true. But, I never have anything. But to thankfully say about it. for both of us, but she's been dead for ten, for, for a while. Ten years. My second years. least favorite Marvel character of all time is Aunt May. She's she served her fucking purpose. She needs. To, I just she's feel like four hundred and eighty yeah. years old, and it's she's like fucking. Me Bag of uh, dust. Are you Spider Man? Uh, no, Aunt May, it. I'm not Spider. It's like fuck it. I don't care anymore. I don't care. Did you know I, they I killed really Aunt May in, in 1995? Uh, yes. And the fans reacted so strongly that they brought they her brought back. her back, and they shouldn't have because the yeah. fans would have fucking gotten yeah, over it. Was it was also the same yeah. year that they said Ben Riley was the real Spider Man. Spider Man. Yeah. Fans did the same thing. Like no. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're telling me is canon, and I'm saying no. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, and I think that's I, I have a hard time thinking of a time when a superhero died. And I thought that it was good that they came back. In almost every instance, 
I mean, I can't think I mean, of an, uh, a counterexample. I always want that character to stay dead. I can think of good stories that have happened after they came back, but oh, yeah, I'm absolutely. almost never happy when I hear that they're coming back because but, I like change in the universe. Like, I've often talked about my favorite part of the DC universe is a legacy. Like, I love it when a new character picks up the the carries the torch for another character. So this book has great examples of that because Crisis it's got is a perfect setup for like it's got John oh, Stewart in it and people are meeting the Green Lantern. Jonah Hex meets the Green Lantern and he's like, yeah. but he wasn't yeah, you know yeah, he wasn't color. Yeah. And it's before. like, oh okay, well that's weird. Well, <laughs> and like, I thought it was really funny slash weird. All the black characters have afros. Well, it was the well. There was, was eight, eight, it was five. Have you the eight, baseball eight. cards? All my cards were yeah. five. The no, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying oh. it's bad. Oh, I'm, oh God! I'm hitting the <laughs> Eric's destroying, <laughs> the I'm destroying the studio. Put your pants I'm back. Not, He's <laughs> finally gone crazy. I'm oh, well, man. You start mentioning hair, I get mad. Like, I'm, <laughs> man, fuck I'm not your saying hair. it's bad or wrong. It was just something I noticed. Well, it's like, oh look, it's John Stewart. Oh, and he's got an afro. Hey, it's Black Lightning. He's got an afro. That's just fashion. That's honestly what it was named. Well, and I think that the other thing that's worth mentioning. Well, Black Lightning got his power from his afro. Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> that's not at all true. I love that his name is still now. Black Lightning well, yeah, now. Like, really? Like, well, they, they actually lampshaded a little bit in the Young Justice cartoon because really? he actually shot Black Lightning. Like, he oh. shot out Black Lightning. Okay. Okay. Uh-uh. And it's like, uh, okay, that's I fair. Guess. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> um, that's one name, way to fix that. So, no, yeah. 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 You could just go. kind of went the opposite direction yeah. Yeah. you would expect. I, uh, oh, I just, I'm, I'm always sad that uh, the West Coast Avengers had a character named the Living Lightning who was Hispanic, and I always think they should have called it Brown Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Well, so that's what I call Post Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that's my Post Taco Bell. Senior Senior Lightning. Joe and I. Apparently, you know. Marvel's a little bit more sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> a little, little like, bit. Well, then, what does this character do? Hey, he's just lightning. Oh, so he's black. Oh, just call him Black Lightning. Seems good to me. Because oh, uh, Black Falcon never happened? Uh, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, black Panther. Black yeah. Panther. Yeah. yeah. But, mm. I mean, well, a Black I'm Panther pretty sure is actually that there a thing. Well, it is. It where is. Uh, Captain America asks Falcon to be on the Avengers, and he's like, fuck you. Like, this is just a quota thing. And he's like... Well, yeah, it is actually a quota thing, but I still think you're a really cool superhero, and I want you. <laughs> but I still like you. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're still friends, right? <laughs> um, uh, I forgot. Oh, the one thing I'm, I wanted to note about Crisis, besides the fact that it's a great place for legacy to happen, because this is where Barry dies and Wally takes over, yep. is that I noticed this time reading it how many um, like minority superheroes there are, like how many superheroes there are that are either women or like yeah. men of uh, you know, different races and women of different races. You've got a Japanese, like a lot of Japanese heroes mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, Dune, female Dr. heroes. Introduced new Doctor Light, Asian. she's yeah. female and Asian, and like how different that is and from the, the DC Wildcat as well. Is yeah, a is Hispanic, Hispanic woman. and yeah. uh, there's a vibe is in here who's Puerto Rican, yeah. and there's like a lot of di- like there's and the Russian guy. There's like very clearly this is not just the white American Justice League, yeah. the white American DC. Mm-hmm. And they had such a diversity of just comic locations. Yeah. Because there were all these different universes. And I was I was actually counting it this week. Mm-hmm. And if you look at Green Lantern, Batman, and Superman, mm-hmm. and their related characters like Batwoman and Superboy and uh, Red Lanterns and stuff, those three character umbrellas composed 26 out of 52 titles that yeah. DC is bringing that right now. Half their line are devoted to just those three characters and their ancillary characters. Yeah. Oh, like, totally. D- the DC Universe has become a very, very monocultural place. Well, yeah, and it's it, you can see it now is so different than this. Is like, there are not enough female superheroes in the DC Universe, which is something that we're... Uh, defi- I'm definitely going to talk about when we're talking about Identity Crisis. Oh, but, yeah. like, <laughs> there's not enough diversity in the DC Universe now. Yeah, and, like, not. looking back, that there was oh. ten... 15, yeah. <laughs> the, I'm wearing the current Justice League shirt right now. They got the one black dude. Me, white, 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 white. It makes me yeah. angry. I'm looking it at Manix's shirt, yeah. and I like Manix, but his shirt makes me very angry. Well, he's wearing a new 52 Justice League. No, just, so, yeah, cover that up. Cover them shit Take up. that off. Why'd you take your pants off and not that? <laughs> um, just, it's weirder this way. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> you are right. Um, <laughs> no, but it just, it's crazy to me that the DC universe of 1985 is like more progressive and PC 
than the DC Universe of 2014. And the thing that really pisses me off is that DC sees the the sales of, you know, the Batman, Superman, their best-selling titles... And they cancel really fucking good books in oh, yeah. order to make more titles oh, with absolutely. those characters. Yeah. Uh, a well, good example being Demon Knights, uh, which we have which yeah. was good for the first 20 issues or so, the first yeah. uh, 18 issues. Then it got shitty after that. But like, yeah, and the, and, and they cancel it to make is, more Superman they're books doing or weekly more Batman, Batman book books. Now. The the weekly. problem with DC Comics weekly. being a monocultural. Uh, producer of comics has to do with the problem in the comics community being a monocultural community. Well, they're going after a specific audience that isn't, well, the, the, that isn't yeah. America. Let me and let me specify that not just the comics community, but the superhero comics yeah. community is a, is a monocultural. Well, uh, well, community. actually, I, I, I talk about but... this in the blog post, which will have been posted when this comes out. You guys haven't read it yet, but yeah. DC commissioned a study by the uh, Nielsen Company mm-hmm. to like find out like what was going on with their audience and what the reaction was to the New Fifty Two. The average comic reading audience is forty five percent female. Yeah, the DC reading audience is seven percent female. Yeah, like, this is not, not a comic book problem. Cool. This is a problem that DC has. No, absolutely, because yeah. DC has an audience that they are targeting. Well, yeah. And it's, like, 35 to 40-year-old white men. Yeah. And well, that's the only people they give a shit about appeasing to, and... And that's why you have 16 Batman titles. And it's hard. Your favorite thing about DC, the legacy, that yeah. is what they've done away with now. Oh, it's gone. Why is it Hal Jordan is back right. to being... Why is it well, Barry Allen the, back to being the, the Flash? Why did they, everyone have to go back yes. to when they were kids? Right. Jeff Jones is reliving his childhood. Dan Didio is reliving his childhood. Well, it's, it's, I agree. It's, well, it's and, not just Jeff Jones reliving his childhood. It's the entirety of DC Comics has taken this huge step back to being 90s Marvel comics. Even having I mean, Tom like, DeFalco in the actual even, creators, yeah, Tom DeFalco, Scott Marvel, Lobdell, yeah. Well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll, we will get lucky I mean, like, because mid '90s Marvel went bankrupt. Yeah, yeah well, that's the surprise, yeah. right? right. right. Well, we we can, so you think they would about know. This the before, worst yeah, part of it so. all to me is not like okay, they put Barry, Hal, and Barbara Gordon back into their classic yeah. Silver Age roles. It's the idea that. They have to be in those roles because there has to be one iconic version of those characters. No, I hate right. that. You can't yeah. have yeah. Yeah, no, back right. and, and it sets that. up this idea mm. that okay, you know, Barbara Gordon's not Oracle anymore. That's really crappy. Yeah, Barbara Gordon will always be Batgirl. That's and even worse. Can never be anything, <laughs> anything else other, than yeah. that. Yeah, Bart it's Allen, just... presumably, who's the Kid Flash now. Will never be anything except yeah. Kid Flash because Barry Allen will Flash. always be the Flash because he's the iconic version. And that's why they'll never. Can, that's why they'll never bring Wally the, back. It can, makes the universe stagnant because yeah. nothing can ever change. Uh, yeah. And I think that there's no place that is, is more indicative of this than in Justice League 3000 because the 30, 31st oh century is the home of the Legion of Superheroes. Which except it's not because now. the yeah. Justice League of the 31st century is who clones of superman batman wonder woman the flash like it's the in a thousand years the superheroes are gonna be the exact I same i flipped through that and i got pissed i got yeah, so pissed so they're like why do they look the same why do they look well, the same it's, it's, i couldn't can I just say fuck your house style dc yeah, yeah. no no seriously God, and, that. and, yeah. and, and I, I mean just, like i yeah, already i think for uh, me kind of I, even legion. aside from oh, fucking like when i heard that uh Demetrius and Giffen were doing a book again with what's his face, the writer, the uh, the artist they worked with on Justice League International, Kevin uh, McGuire. Kevin McGuire. There, yes, right. Who, and this is like one of my favorite teams. I love Justice League International. JLI is amazing. Uh, JLI is fucking great, and it's it's it, to me it represents what really great superhero comics should be. It's fucking fun. It's lighthearted, but it has these really great moments in it. Mm-hmm. And they did. Uh, I can't believe it's not the Justice League. Uh, Which was awesome. Formerly, uh, formerly known, as known Justice as... League. All that shit is just fucking great. And so I was like, okay, all right, maybe this is going to be, maybe there's going to be something different. And then the first fucking indication that something was horribly, horribly wrong was they didn't want to work with Kevin Maguire. Mm-hmm. And when I found out the reason was, we don't think your style will suit the book. And immediately I was like, I need to like set fire to like someplace where these people are. I need to burn it down while they're in them. While they're in that place, that place needs to no longer exist because 
to me, it was a very good indication that well, it's, they were just going to shit all over it the way they have. Books like Crisis on Infinite Earths and JS, Justice League International and uh, stuff that happened after Crisis are what made the DC Modern Age great, which is yes. change can, will, and is going, going to, to happen. happen. Like, yeah, shit's going to change. We're going to get different Green Lanterns. We're going to get different Flashes. There's going to be three different Batgirls. There's going to be five Robins. There's going to be multiple well, incarnations of the like, Justice League. This is, and it's funny because in the animated universe, you have several episodes of, of uh, Justice League and, and, a, and I, uh, well, Justice League, where they go into the future and there's a Justice League there. And it's different. Yeah, it's different. Well, and you it's have fucking ba- awesome. You have Batman Beyond, which is one of my favorite pieces yeah, of it's Batman. So great. It's, it's just so like good. that's a great mythos. Like that's an amazing place for that story to go. Like if you don't love the end of Batman, that is the Dark Knight Returns. And there's a lot of us out there that like doesn't think that's how the Batman. Fuck I don't think Fra- that's how. You Frank Miller. Yeah, I don't right? think that's how the Batman story ends. I disagree. Of and I think that in the I don't want that the Batman fact to be a dick. I know yeah, the I mean, fact you know. that the DC universe existed where there were multiple possibilities for where Batman goes at the end of his career yeah. was something that I really valued about the modern age of DC Comics because they could have stuff like Batman Beyond as a TV show and yeah. also bring it into the comics continuity. Well, and Batman Beyond has the. Ace the Bat Dog, who's well, it's, fucking it's amazing. Ace man. the Bat Hound, and it's got it's just like there's so many good good things that can happen when you let a character die and replace him. Like Toby and I have mentioned on the show how much we were both disappointed when Bruce came back and Dick was no longer Batman. Yeah, absolutely. The the Dick Grayson Batman is the most interesting thing that's happened in Batman in ten years. Well, that, and oh, another easy. thing we talked about is the Grant Morrison Batman and Robin yeah. run. I mean, yeah. one thing that I absolutely loved about that is it was Dick Grayson normally being, it was Batman would be the broody one, and yeah. Robin would be the, like, it's fun-loving, uh, let me crack some jokes, come yeah. on, guys, be happy. <laughs> you know, that was that was what people were used to, and that's what yeah. I was used to. Then you read that, and it's Damien being the broody one. Yeah. I mean, there's points where he's like, shut up, I'll, I'll punch you in the face. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, can, and I Dick Grayson's still... like, lighten up. Like, yeah. like, so it flips that dynamic on yeah. its ear. And that was just so refreshing. And that's to how read. you tell a great story: is you take the preconceived ideas that someone has walking into that story, and you change them, and you Actually, tell a yeah. story. Uh, the, one of the first comics I ever wrote, and keep in mind, none of my comics have ever been published, nor ever will, so you'll never get to read it. Oh, we're putting it on the website. Kate doesn't know. <laughs> but um, it was it was after Dick Grayson became Batman because that was just it was so awesome, and it was it was a it was a really good change of pace yeah and it made for some great comic writing and that was the dc universe that i wanted to write comics in oh yeah well, you want to write conflict, comics there's conflict built into that switch because fucking tim never or uh dick never wanted to be batman yeah dick fucking left because he didn't want he wanted to be his own person he wanted to yeah. be his own hero and so i think there's something inherently interesting there and i don't think that you have to. You can bring Bruce back to tell the stories you want to tell about him in flashback or in something like you write fucking comics, man. Have some creativity. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. don't need him there. All, make All Star Batman and Robin an ongoing series. Have and, it not be written by Frank Miller. Don't yeah. let Frank and Miller tell, anywhere within a hundred fucking miles. Tell of the it. classic Batman stories that you want to tell. Well, yeah. I was actually it's thinking actually about this. Like exactly what Marvel's have a multi Sherlock Holmes Bruce has been a character that's gone on yeah. for a hundred years, and there have been modern interpretations Absolutely. of him. But there is nothing stopping anybody because he's now in the public domain from going back and writing a Sherlock Holmes story set in. The 1890s or whatever. Yeah. Like, well, it's, there's it's, lots of room if DC wants to do it to tell classic, you know, Bruce Wayne I, Batman stories well, set it's in what, the 1940s. It's what Marvel's doing right now with Superior Spider Man going on and Peter Parker not being Spider Man, or the Peter Parker that we know being Spider Man. They're doing, what is it? Some, uh, it's like the Amazing Spider-Man 600.1 or 700.1. 700. And those are stories mm-hmm. set previous. Those are Peter Parker stories in the past yeah. that were, have never been told. And Marvel Knights Spider-Man is another Spider-Man that's story an that's Peter Parker. Yeah. Out of continuity. And like, yeah. that yeah, can exactly. exist. Well, and those books are cool. all good. And then the thing is that it doesn't even necessarily have to be out of continuity. I mean, Conan the Barbarian has... A, like, he has... A chronology. Yeah. Like, he starts in a place and he ends in a place and lots of things happen in the middle in a particular order. But that doesn't stop you from adding more stuff well, in there. And it's the like seven... Not every second of every day is... Right. He's already fucking king. Like, the first yeah. one in the... 
And I think I had the version that was pu- the stories were uh, published in chronological chron- order. chronological order. And in the fucking first one, he's already he's at the end. He's yeah. already become king. Yeah. And then it goes jumps around from there, and like, it doesn't well, detract anything from those stories. I, I think that Bruce Wayne is a really interesting character as a like 30s and 40s like masked crime fighter and mm-hmm. the further that he gets away from that origin as we move into the future the less sense he i think he makes as a character yeah. the punisher is a really awesome character to exist in the 1970s and 80s today he's kind of just weird and fucked up and I out of place really like, like to i would punisher be really interested more... to see a dc and marvel universe that says okay, this is a set chronology and like Captain America came back in the 60s and he was active for this period of time and then he ended his career. And we can till, still tell Captain America stories set during that time period but somebody without picks making up the these characters like over. immortal yeah. Yeah. where their timeline is constantly shifting. Well, like and... I think the shifting timeline is actively detrimental to the evolution of these universes because there is that compulsion to keep the characters kind of statically there in these roles but shifting the universe around yeah and then that's what i liked about the dc universe was it felt like it was moving forward oh, yeah, but yeah those, exactly those 700 the amazing spider-man 700 point one and point those are those are in continuity yeah so they're doing exactly what you're saying well, they the, should do and i like that the, about the, marvel the, is they have you, the ability to do stuff like that you see this when you read uh flash volume three and you see wally going through and dealing with shit that barry went through but he can't deal with it like barry did so he's got to do something else yeah you see it with kyle becoming green lantern oh god he deals yeah. with a lot of the shit that hal had to deal with early on in his career as green lantern but he doesn't fucking you know he's like a, he's a graphic he's, yeah. he's a uh, different guy yeah he's a he's an <laughs> illustrator right he's an artist so yeah. he doesn't he thinks about things in different uh in different ways and like that's I think Green Lantern is like the most inexcusable of those going back because Hell is easily the least interesting of all of the fucking well, Green Lantern. Rebirth, Rebirth actually like really painted that really well for me because there there's a scene where he's breaking down how each of the them, ring, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, and so so like Kyle like like fucking angels and chariots or shit. Yeah. Like, the gorgeous construct is coming out because this dude's an artist. And, and that's and how so he's like, wow, that's things. amazing. And, and he's talking about and, how on John you yeah, can see John, the screws John, and the fucking bolts because the, the, the thing is, yeah, you, you can only yeah. make constructs that you know how to how to, how to to use. That's why like in the movie when he has the machine gun, he couldn't do that because Hal Jordan's stupid and he doesn't know how to fucking machine gun. He yeah, know. That's why he's box. So Hal Jordan, it's like, he is, I'm sorry. Hal Jordan is dumb. I like Hal Jordan, but he's stupid. He is like, he makes interesting to have a stupid superhero. Yeah, and that's fine. That's Fun. Yeah, boxing glove punch. Yeah, that's fun. Well, he talks about like Kilowog, how Kilowog will always take the easiest answer. He doesn't even really make yeah. constructs. He just like hits people with energy. Yeah. Well, and, and he talks like, about cool. how yeah. guy. Like, I love how he breaks down. That's like my favorite scene mm-hmm. from Rebirth, where really he breaks cool. it down and he's like, each one has. But it also made me think of, like how Jordan is even more of a bitch. Yeah, you well, know? and that's like, the thing. It's like you bring him back, and you kind of have him. Like, what's interesting to me about Hal is Hal existing in this world where he's not the fucking alpha male Green Lantern, mm-hmm. you know? Because you have yeah. Kyle, who's been fucking Ion and been like a fucking god, right? And he's like, you never experienced that much power. You wouldn't know what to fucking like. I've I've surpassed you. I was Green Lantern, not even a fucking tenth as long well, as you were, and I surpassed you. Starting right, right before the Infinite Crisis uh, era, I feel like we got into this regression where yeah. it's like all the legacy characters were kind of put back in the bottle and then especially with John's really rising to prominence it was this idea that even though other people had come along and done different things as the Flash or the Green Lantern uh, and had really awesome stories and some even gone even farther than, than like the other their previous incarnation did it was like no, but but Hal Jordan is, is the Green Lantern, and he has to be. And no. like Re- Flash Rebirth really pissed me off because oh, they Flash made him Rebirth. the generator of the Speed Force. Are you fucking serious? Wait, the Speed I don't like even how? Talk about that. Like, oh, it's like he was dead for a million years, he... and Wally. T- the Speed Force didn't even come into existence until like uh, uh, Mark Wade wrote about it. So it's like. Oh, no, uh, he wasn't even, I, like Barry was dead at that no, point. I and of course you had to and say like, oh, I was always in Speed Force and I wasn't really dead. I was in the Speed Force. And I was like, what are you, Jesus now? And you're like, God. And you're sending, like, ah, oh, what? He's, he's I don't the like Jesus that. of fastness. He is. I hate it. I don't like him being fast, fast Jesus. I don't like it. I don't like <laughs> there it. There is only one Flash 
And that's fucking Wally West. Wally all right? West? And you know what? Bart Allen should have been the Flash after that. I agree. It was unconscionable. I, what they I talked about it on the show. Flash. I talked about it on the show. It, it was tragic how you, you quickly should, the fans turned Wally against could have him fucking, and the know, editorial turned against him. You had that whole him. thing, right? Wally was in the Speed Force. Bart was there doing his mm-hmm. thing. And then you could even have Wally come back and do the same thing for Bart that fucking... Uh, that Max Mercury and Jay Jesse, Garrick Jesse, and fucking so, Jesse yeah. and Johnny Quick yeah. did for Wally when he was getting his thing because I think that would have been really interesting because whereas Wally was kind of this self-centered jerk that had to learn how to overcome his his mentor's influence on and, and how that was holding him back. Bart's like fucking super hyperactive from the future, no well, consequences. And he boy. also is and has no self confidence too. Yeah, it, when he becomes the Flash, he's like, "I'm not ready to be the Flash. Yeah, I'm not worthy. I shouldn't be the Flash." And it takes everybody around him to kind of go, "No, you should be the Flash. Like you're great. You know what you're doing." And that story would have been amazing. It would have been. But they had no editorial support on that. Like, well, the fans were shitting on it, and editorial point, gave it John 13 said, issues. And pretty much established what uh, he wanted to do, because he's doing it in Flash, you know? Yeah. Like, he's bring, one of the first things he does on his, when he takes it, because I think Wade was writing for a little bit that Jeff Johns took over, then Mark Wade came back, and then Jeff Johns finished it out. Well, I, I kind of feel like we're moving into... The identity crisis era. So, yeah. do we want to yeah. take a break and come back and talk about identity? Yeah, crisis? was there anything? I, else? I do have one more thing to yeah. say. This is, um, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but how, what I feel that DC should do, and if you're out there, DC, I hope you're listening. <laughs> Um, they can't hear. They have a weird uh, birth defect where they can't hear new and interesting ideas. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but DC, you should keep the new Fifty Two. But don't let that be all you're putting out. Yeah, no, no, that's, um, no, I think that's, that's fair. I was like, saying that from make the like um, a new comic called Flash: The Wally West Chronicles and start telling Wally West stories, or make a right. Green Lantern, I, I, the Kyle Rayner years. I think that's a great idea, and I think the reason that it'll never ever happen is because they want the new Fifty Two to be the new status quo. And it's going to blow up in their faces oh, because yeah, they're absolutely. going to reach a point where people are just like, well... It, their readership is saturated. Like, Everybody that list. likes the New 52 is yeah. already reading, reading it. it. And yeah. new readers, new are not coming they out. come Especially, on and they go, mm, this like, isn't for me. What fucking Image is getting ready to put out, like Image is fucking ramping up. Oh, We're getting ready to do a so whole bunch of like crazy new shit stuff. that's going to be amazing. Marvel's fucking... Uh, the Marvel, Marvel preview. Blackpool and J.H. Williams have like a project that they're working on. Marvel is doing some All really the pre- crazy I talk cool about things. it on the video show, but last week they put out the Marvel preview issue. It was uh, Marvel Now point one number one, right, right. and it showcased like everything that was coming out. I'm so There's excited for the new stuff. books. Like, the thing Mike is Allred, Silver Surfer. Stuff. When oh, you cut, when you what what happens evolutionarily speaking? When you when a body of water is cut off from the main body of water, it stagnates. Right? Yeah. It's like you don't get. You don't get a bunch of, like, really interesting evolutionary creatures from that. You get a fucking dried puddle that eventually dries up and everything dies. Yep. And that's what's going to happen to DC. That's, so, it's, you may, it may not see it next year or the year after, but you'll see it. And especially yeah. as comics as a medium grows and becomes about much more than just superheroes, yeah. as you get much more independent stuff going on. Uh, I th- it's it's just, and I think once Marvel gets Star Wars, that's going to change things. I think that's going to be a big seller for them. Well, there's, there's there's a lot that Marvel, there's a lot of potential that Marvel has because they now have all this powerhouse that is Disney behind yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. And, like things yeah. are going to change, and the guys at Disney, like regardless of how you feel about the decisions they make <laughs> and what they do, like one thing that they do constantly do is try new things That's like true. we wouldn't That's have true. stuff like pixar or this whole cg animation without, boom without <laughs> Wait, Jobs. Oh, yeah. no Boy. without guys the guys at marvel going hmm, that's a different idea like, yeah sure let's try it like i think that the, or the guys at disney doing that and i think that that's something that we'll see is i'm still surprised that there's not a disney presents marvel comics weekly on every newsstand and at every grocery store checkout Right next to the Archie Digests. Like, I'm yeah. still surprised that that happened, hasn't happened. And I think that it will happen. I think that at some point we'll get... It's really weird that we're not seeing Marvel-branded, like, Disney stuff. And, and, stuff. But it's so, going to really happen. It's it, will, happen. it will happen. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm actually surprised. That I'm surprised that it didn't happen faster. But I'm surprised that the Black Widow isn't a DC princess yet. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just favorites. I just have one I mean, thing she to is say. Ducktail Comics. Arena. That's all I yeah. want. I want Ducktail Comics. So yes. so DC they did. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the they did a Ducktail comic for a while and a Darkwing Duck comic. The Darkwing Duck was really No, they were both they were both by the same writer. They were both incredibly good. Like that was Kaboom. Perfect from the show. That's all I want, man. But I think I think they're both over now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before we jump off Crisis, um, I just want to, f- to finish personally with uh, the post-Crisis Superman is my all-time favorite. That's the version that got me into me too. Superman. Uh, I know fans complained at the time that they, quote, Marvelized the character. What I take that to mean is they made Gave him interesting. a fucking personality? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, they, de- they depowered the character. I mean, he was basically like a god before he could, like swim underwater and like he didn't have to breathe he could like move planets see well he jumps on could, he, in this me. book he jumps on the, the treadmill with with uh barry <laughs> and and wally and they're like oh jay. yeah well uh, it's jay yeah it's jay yeah. And, and wally and they're like fucking this. running at super speed right along with the flash and it's like i love superman but it's like the flash's thing is speed let the fucker have speed. yeah you know what i mean yeah. like, the but flash at that is point, faster but like to wally's be. top speed is only somewhere around like three thousand no that happens at the end of this book though what? Where he is only the speed of sound. Yeah, like, but that's yeah. that's six hundred and something. Well, and Jay miles was an always hour. Jay was always slower, but yeah. Well, and at this point, Wally was dying whenever he used his yeah. powers, and right, so he hadn't right. been. And it wasn't until the end of this when the anti monitor hits him with that beam or whatever that he's like, "You're no longer dying, but you're right. super slow compared to what you used to be." Right. Yeah. Which was cool because that sets up my Again. next thing is. Uh, Wally West Flash. I love, and it's like it makes me sad when I read the New Fifty Two because it's like all you did was reintroduce Barry Allen and Bruce Wayne, and you made them like younger and stupider and more inexperienced. But it's like, but we saw that already, and we read yeah. that fucking yeah, and it 20, was 30, 40 years ago, this, and I enjoyed it at the time. Kind of my yeah, problem with Young thing. Justice. Yes. Yeah. Kind of my problem with Young Justice is we've seen these stories we've and they were already. sort of better. But the 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 point Shut is up, that Crisis Charlie. on Infinite Earths made so many new stories possible. Yes, yeah. And it was such for Flashpoint did yeah. not do that. Yeah. There's no. nothing That's, that they've done in the last few years that they could not have done years. in the old continuity. No. So DC, you you can have your cake and eat it too. You can keep the new Fifty Two around for your target audience, but to pull in new readers. You have uh, to try something. No, the yes. only thing I want, the only cake I want DC to have is the cake that they choke on Cuck-cuck and cake. die. But see, yeah. when you I, have I love... <laughs> adult comic readers like Joe here telling his daughter that the true Flash is Wally West, she's not going to go out and buy a well, Flash comic buy that has... No, no, because book. friends don't let friends buy New 52. If your daughter I mean... bought a New 52 book, you would ground her and or well, kill she, her. Well, I had to explain to her at one point, because I actually, the Flash, the New 52 Flash, I didn't find that offensive. No, Francis Manipal's doing Francis a great Francis Manipal's great, and yeah. uh, Brian... Um, really solid. Who was Who was doing the art on Buffaletto. that? Buffaletto. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, it was great. It looked great, mm-hmm. and I was just, I would read it, and I'm like, there is, this is, first of all, this is not Barry Allen. It looks like Barry Allen, but it's not. Oh, it personality. Might absolutely this guy actually no has a personality for one thing. fucking like, yeah, reason yeah. to call this guy Barry Allen. And Chard, very famously, was leaving my house once, and we were having this conversation, oh, yeah. and he goes, you could call him Fred Armisen. It wouldn't matter. For real. And That's, I looked yeah, at whoever was real. there with me, and I said, actually, you couldn't because that's a real person yeah i was trying to make up a name but uh, uh, <laughs> and it's true it's like you read Poor it and then it it made it hard to read after that because because of that fact because it's not barry barry didn't have a personality yeah and there there's just no reason there's no reason to do that well can we say too so when crisis uh when crisis ends and these books restart even though we have definitive new origins like a year one and like a man of steel it still implied that some of the pre-crisis stuff could have happened yeah and i found that satisfying so you didn't necessarily throw the baby out of the bathwater new 52 tried that but it was way more convoluted and a lot more confusing well Well, and a lot more stuff was damien (laughs) (laughs) and the bathwater was was Rosemary's baby (laughs) well and they they happened they kept too much. Yeah. Like, what they yeah. kept from Crisis was, like, just enough yeah. to make the universe still work. And they just work. blown it up. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, well what they over. did is they basically said, like, everything is off the table until it's specifically reintroduced. And you got the sense, like, Batman's had adventures before. 
And I can imagine in my mind that it's the story that I really like. Yeah. Well, and also, but there was a couple that, Robins already, so you know some stuff yeah, has happened. Something yeah, something Right, like, well, I mean, Jason Todd was... Well, vague, and that's... Well, he died after... Well, Crisis, yeah, he's yeah. he's the Robin that is in Crisis on Infinite Earths. And yeah. they, they kind of needed that in order to the, maintain yeah. the legacy characters taking over. Yeah. You know, Wally, you know, is taking over from Barry, who had a career for a long time before it, and during that time, that's when you know, Bruce had Dick... Who yeah. grew up, went to college, still at that became point, became Nightwing. Nightwing. Yeah. I love that that all still happened, and some of it was altered in some way. <laughs> uh, the thing that I loved, one of the biggest changes that I think actually strengthened the legacy ties, was suddenly it it had always taken place on the same Earth, and mm-hmm. so you had the Justice Society. Who I'm actually, honestly, I like the Justice Society a lot more now. They're than the great. Justice League. Oh, yeah, They're actually yeah, my favorite totally. superhero DC team, and. Uh, it's like they were kind of like the old guard, the inspiration for yeah. even people like Superman and yeah, stuff yeah. Like, that had come later. Uh, I found that was really cool. Um, yeah, and I wish that they had taken the opportunity to, to go back to the point that I made about you know, um, not continuity, but of, t- of time moving on. I would love if they had taken that opportunity to say like, okay, like this was the Justice League of the late twentieth century. And a lot of them are, you know, it's like Oliver Queen, like he's in his fifties now. Yeah. He's retired. Uh, his Connor Hawk is now green arrow, like taking that opportunity to bring those younger characters up and go, okay, these are the main guys yeah. now. And they sort of like, did that. That was the but not perfect enough. opportunity yeah. Yeah. to do it. Yeah. Uh, there was one final thing that I wanted to add though, yeah. about crisis on infinite earths actually. And it's just a panel that I wanted to point out where uh, they're having the big fight in, like, non-existent space with the Anti-Monitor and every all the, like, powerful heroes are just blasting on him. Yeah. And there's one panel where it's Batman and Robin in the background with, like, Brainiac 5 and a couple of other people. And Robin's like, Batman, we haven't got any powers. What can we do? And Batman's like, we can share our courage. We can give them hope. <laughs> and, like, that's just so that's 180 <laughs> degrees from where Batman is as oh, a character yeah. now. Batman's like, saying hope? And he's, like, what? No, that he's standing on the sidelines, but yeah. it's like, we can share our uh, courage. We can give them hope. It's like, the current day Batman would be like right there in the middle doing something ridiculous. He would be like, I built, I out planned of this. I saw that there was going to be an anti monitor, so I yeah. built an anti monitor fighting Gundam, and, and I'm in it. In the and face. Robin and yeah. Robin's controlling one fist, and I'm controlling the other Batman one, and we're has punching him in so the face. So stupidly overpowered and yeah. overhyped, and, the, and I love Batman. It's like, just, and they make me hate him because he's yeah. like, he's yeah, like absolutely. the new, absolutely. he's the new like. Well, because you have all these fucking one. fanboys right around Batman. It's, the, it's it's funny because it's the it's the new equivalent. To the Wolverine Lobo fight from oh, the '90s, God. right? Which is Superman yeah. Batman, and it's like I'm sorry, I love Batman, right? Like he's a great character. He's, he's a great very character. Interesting. And there's only one way that fight ends if Superman wants Batman yeah. dead, and that's with Batman dead. Yeah, without even realizing. Yeah, he's like done. if you're gonna argue with me, then you're then you well, clearly my, never oh, read a fucking comic book in your entire life. My argument has always been that like Superman wouldn't kill Batman because well, he, he doesn't thing. want to. Like right. that's the argument. Yeah. Is like would he yeah. kill him? No. no, and therefore Batman wins. But that's not because Superman like lets. Well, like, that's, that's like, him letting yeah. him win. My only, right? the, I think the only part of Hush that I really like is there's this part uh, Superman is, gets taken over by Poison Ivy and mm-hmm. Bats does this kind of weird like plan thing. And afterwards, and of course it works, and they free Superman from Poison Ivy's influence. And afterwards he goes, how could you know it would work? How how could you know I wouldn't kill you? And Bruce is like, because I know you, and I know that no matter what, you would never do that. Yeah. 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 And it's this really great moment, yeah. because that's what's great about them, is that it's not about who wins in that fight. It's the fact that that fight never happens, because yeah. they are... They are friends, and they yeah. even when Batman is being like a super dick, right? Like, you know, uh, Clark, uh, Superman understands why Batman does what he does. Yeah. And that's why they have all these great moments. Like, some of my favorite moments in comic them are, are moments where Superman's just like, oh, you're being a dick now. That's cool. I, I still got your back, man. Like, you know, it's like, I'm not going to help you do this stupid shit because it's stupid, but... I know, I know what's going on. I know you'll be back. And, and that was um, certainly a key change as well uh, in the post-crisis. Is yeah, you know, if you had read uh, World's Finest and a lot of the books before, they were full on like friends, and they would like hang oh, out, yeah, and yeah coffee totally. together. And they're like, they're like, yeah. bad, like there were stories where even like he's my best friend. Yeah. Um, I don't find that version of the story as interesting, but I also I fucking hate them as enemies, and like it drives me nuts. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I like it how they they the, how they mainly played it uh, post-crisis was it was like. I respect you, 
you're kind of the yin to my yang. I don't quite fully understand you or even necessarily trust you all the way, but like I know you have my back and you know I have your back. And ultimately, am I not and close enough? No, no, I you. was just going to say, and for that awesome story, go read Action Comics Annual Number 1, which is <laughs> one of my favorite single issue of all time. Oh, is that what they fight? Dracu- the they Dracu- fight the, the vampires. Draculas? Yeah, they, they, fight they fight the, fight the Draculas. Draculas and the Art yeah. Adams art. Yeah, that's yeah. good stuff. That's that's Art um, Adams is the best. That's, that's, a, that's a good story. Where, where Batman swims out of quicksand. Yeah. One yeah. thing I completely <laughs> forgot I wanted to mention until Toby brought up that one panel um, is that there was uh, one of the issues had one of the issues of Crisis on Infinite Earth had a a strip going along the bottom of each oh, page. Oh yeah. Yep. That was like right about that same time as that panel. Yeah. It was like issue ten or eleven. I, I, I can't remember which. I think it's eleven, but I'm not. Sounds um, right. Yeah. But it, it was really fun for me because after I read that issue, I went back and just read the, yeah. s- the bottom strips, just page after page, and it was quite amazing. I I have to say that. Yeah, there's yeah. a really lot of great storytelling that happens, and it's not modern storytelling. It's no. very different, and you're going to have to be patient with it and mm-hmm. learn how to appreciate it. But it is really, really good. The panel work in this book is like outstanding. Like There's so much amazing page layouts in this book that are just oh, yeah. uh, it's so worth flipping through just to see the art i think i love the art in this book i've got to say too one more thing that they did r- immediately after this they did a pro- two pay uh two-part prestige format uh series the same creative team of uh, perez and wolfman called history of the dc yeah. universe uh that was invaluable at the time uh, because what it did was it basically started with like the dawn of this like new earth uh, it had, you know, Krypton, it was really cool, because it had, like, we'd have Krypton exploding, you'd have, like, Superman's rocket, like, flying, and, like, at the same time, it's, you know, traveling through the galaxy, it's just like, you know, the planet was formed, and all this is going on, and, like, the thousands of years it takes, you know, like, the rocket or whatever to get, uh, you know, where it needs to be, and, and land on Earth for, like, the modern era of superheroes to start, and all that fun stuff, it's, like, all the things with, like, Sergeant Rock still happening during this time, and, like, the Justice Society got together at this time, and it kind of, it, it was, like, a a rough outline of what the the new version of this Earth was, and we never got that after uh, Infinite Crisis, and we never got that no. after New, new 52, 52. Yeah. but I like that during Crisis they had enough consideration for us as fans that, like, they tried to at least give us, like, kind of like a Bible for, like, you yeah. know, here's kind of the this fundamentals. Is, this is where it starts. Here's the jumping off point, guys, because yeah. even though you read Crisis and that was a great read, it's like, if you're wondering what, like, the new version of this is now. This is officially what we're saying is yeah. the thing. And, well, it, and the it difference wasn't... is they they knew that. Well, with the yeah. and they had planned. Yeah. For it. With the yeah. new fifty two, they had no, no was a idea. Yeah. Yeah. But Absolutely. that's one that I wanted to reread, and I ran out of time. But the history. That's it. If you guys read this and you end up really liking, which I think you will, um, check out. It's it should still be in print. It's just a trade paperback now. But yeah, yeah history of the DC universe. And also, if you want to spend the money, the absolute, absolute. edition of this book is amazing. And it oh. Comes with a gorgeous. compendium, which is super helpful. Fucking incredibly yeah, it helpful. Doesn't it have like a page by page? Like here's everybody that's appearing. Yeah, and it's it's not just that. It's interviews with Wolfman and Perez. It's a breakdown of each of the fucking Earths that exist in uh, po- uh, pre-crisis continuity. And it's got a breakdown of who's who and what they're doing there, including the appearance of Peter Parker. Yeah. And uh, it's a really great companion to the series, and the series and the book itself is brilliant. As, as far as absolute editions go, I think I really believe that it's the best value yeah, of, any, of yeah. any absolute. This edition one of the Sandman thought. ones is the only ones I would ever buy. Uh, the rest of them are like way overpriced, but but this one, is, you know, is I, I think that uh, the Long Halloween for seventy five dollars is good. Not that's true. too bad. And I got, right. well, I got thirteen got issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for a killer deal. Well, you got the, the, the yeah. But yeah. at retail, I think that this one is like I, an this amazing is the best fucking yeah. deal. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, are we good on Crisis on Infinite Earths? I think, I think, I think we're, we're good. Definitely. That was two hours on Crisis on Infinite Earths. That was an hour and a half. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, anyway, on my clock it says Anyways, two hours, but I started recording uh, a little So before. stay tuned because Crisis on Infinite Podcast continue with <laughs> uh, continues with part two. Part two identity, identity crisis. crisis. So, we'll see you there in a minute. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, guys. The music. Bye. 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 Bye.